Shalom, shalom, shalom. Oh, praise the hell by Shalom, the Mashiach, Yahushai. Come to Shalom! Summit here in Greensboro, North Carolina. Hallelujah. Yeah. Y'all know we're supposed to start at 12, <laughs> but here we are. We're starting anyway. The Spirit of the Most High, Hulk, Marshall, and Mara Shai. We're going to start off with the prayers. We're in the Sabbath. Come. So we're going to start off with the prayers. Okay. And we're going to face the east. Uh, Bunyan, uh, tell us which way the east is. Okay. The east is, you're facing the east, okay? So you don't have to turn the way, you're facing the east. Okay, so we got uh, the priest, Kalak Raka, is gonna do this uh, prayers, okay? So let's follow along. Okay, Khan? All right. Panya Akudam, face the east. Barakat the Yahweh. 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 Barakat the Yahweh.
Mr. Rowling on your table. Cut. You see it? Uh, so on the back of this, right, Masharaya Sha'ala. Okay, just go through the itinerary, you'll see where it says Sabbath service. That's the itinerary. Okay. So, as you can see, the Sabbath service is always in Masharaya Sha'ala, Hebrew Summit. We always have the Sabbath service, and we go through the uh, first five books. We go through the Old Testament, we go through the New Testament, we go through the Gospel, we go through the Torah. Kun. We go through, uh, brothers read somebody Apocrypha. Kun. So we go through the whole Bible. Okay? So we're going to start off with El Ash. Okay? And he's reading out of Ezekiel 37, 16. Okay, Ash, you can start off. Shalom, shalom, brothers and sisters. Shalom, shalom. First scripture I'm going to get, I'm going to get all. We're going into the book of 2 Kings, the 20th chapter in the first verse. Also, I'm going to read the book of Isaiah, the 38th chapter, and the first verse. Can I get a reader? In 2 Kings, the 20th chapter, and the first verse. And that was 
was something that that individual spoke against and they didn't believe in cremation. See, because that person is not here to defend themselves, so the family's going to do what they want to do. Not all families. But see, we should start to make preparations now. Con, they are sisters that have been cremated. There's a brother now in Potter Steel, and we're looking to get his remains, uh, looking for a piece of life, get his remains, and get him up out of there because of family miscommunication in family. Family ripped them off and everything. And then when it gets to the Israelites, nobody wants to communicate. We don't want that, con. So look at this on a serious level. Okay, make preparations and let's start today. There's another brother. All he knew is Hebrew Israelites. He used to stand before us with a staff in his hand, comments, and listen to us teach year after year. He, he ended up passing. His family took him to church. They did the funeral. He was in the casket in a suit and tie. And we never seen him in a suit and tie, never. A Hebrew Israelite for over 30 years. The family, no communication with brothers and sisters that he loved, he, Hebrew Israelites. You see that? There's another situation. Two brothers was close friends for over 30 years, Hebrew Israelites. One brother transitioned, and the brother communicated with the family. The family said, okay, we'll get back with you. He said, I can do the burial. Okay, we got the finance and everything. Okay, the family said, we'll get back with you. The family got back with the brother and said, you know, we already cremated. And the brother knew nothing about cremation. That wasn't his belief for over 30 years. The only thing he knew, I'm a Hebrew Israelite. I don't believe in cremation. See, because when you transition, you're not here to speak for yourself. You have to let that paperwork speak for you. So put everything in writing. Because a lot of times your family is, is you know, they don't believe in what you believe in. You see that? So it will take a lot of burden off your congregation. Because when that hits, and when you want to help the brother out, the family's just going to let you pull that weight. Not all families, but some families just going to fall back and let you take that financial burden. You see that? But brothers and sisters, we're looking at now, we're looking at a GoFundMe, a burial GoFundMe. And Brother Yakanan is over the, the, the burial uh, system, and he's going to go deeper with you brothers and sisters in his class about the burial fund, the GoFundMe. So that's what we're looking at now. And, and we're looking at to get a burial ground for Hebrew Israelites, not just brothers and sisters that come to the summit, not just brothers and sisters that are part of your congregation, but for all Hebrew Israelites to take some of that burden off families and take some of the burden off congregations. You see that? So we're looking at a GoFundMe. Con, and that's for all Israelites. Con? And I just thought I'd go through these through two scriptures just to uh, show you brothers and sisters and give you this information because it's like it happens too much, too many times. A brother or sister live their life as a Hebrew Israelite, but then their loved ones or family go and do the opposite of, of the life that they live. You see that? Cremation and all this other stuff. Brothers been wearing garments for over 40 years or 30 years and put him in a casting of suit and tie. No garments, no weepery, no headpiece. But that's how he lived his life. Because the dead is not here to speak about themselves. They're not here to speak on their behalf. So the paperwork speaks for that and we will. Con, uh, in our year. Asha's done. All right, I say shalom, shalom, shalom to everybody. Akiwa, akiwa, all right, all right. I feel up ourselves, man, all right? It's gone time, time to go home, time for redemption, all right? Time to be resurrected, time to stand firm, time to hold ourselves up and rejoice that our salvation is coming in the land of our captivity, man, all right? We're not far off, it's very near, we're close, all right? Just hang tight, keep your faith. Kolak, you gonna read for me, right? All right, Kolak, Rakha, you gonna get for me Jeremiah 29, Jeremiah 29, we're going to start from the 11th verse, all right? Because our, our salvation is near, man. I can feel it. I know it's coming. I know the destruction is coming. But we've been here too long. It's time to go home, all right? Like the song Coco T said, 
hurry up and come, hurry up and come. Mount Zion is our home. Babylon must fall. Okay? Babylon has to fall and the children of Israel have to go home. Okay? We've been a captive exile in this place for a long time. Now it's time for us to raise our heads up, keep the faith, be humble, love the Mount Zion, love your neighbor as yourself. That's the key. That's the two main principles. Love the Mount Zion and love your neighbor as yourself. Okay? And that's the thing that's lacking amongst us as a nation of people. Right? So you do your part that you can be found worthy to make it into the kingdom of the Most High. Nobody's going to make it for you. You have to put your foot in and do your part. That's your job and that's your application. Right? So everybody's uh, shopping class is going to be a little different, but it's all incorporating different topics that's in your, that's, that's in our minds and our spirit to bring up. This is my spirit to bring up because I know it's coming. And nobody can tell me no different. We have reached our 400 year mark. We're going home. Okay? So, Kalak Rakab, kick it off for me, Jeremiah 29 11. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Most High. So, the Most High said, the Most High said, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you. And the Most High has some good thoughts for us. Continue. Thoughts of peace. Thoughts of peace. The most I have peace for us. But the peace is not going to be here in America. Continue. And not of evil. And not of evil. Continue. To give you an expected end. Ooh, you hear that? To give us an ex accepted end. What is an accepted end? To receive the kingdom and the rulership of the most high. Through the grace that he has given us. Right? And that's what we, that's the expected end. Not to be here in America and think that America is going to be the place of our rest. And that Kamala Harris is going to be for president of these United States. No. Or Trump. Hell no. Okay? We're going home. Read a verse again for me, Kalam. I love that. Verse 11. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Most High. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you an expected end. To give you an expected end. And our end is going to be an expected end. Continue. Then shall ye call upon me. Then shall we call upon the most side. Then we're going to call upon the most side. Continue. And ye shall go and pray unto me. And we're going to go and pray unto the most side. Just like he said in the book of Baruch. Jeremiah 2 and 29. He said in the land of your captivity. You're going to remember the most side. Remember yourselves. And you're going to pray to the most side. Okay, in the land of our captivity, we will remember ourselves and remember who the Most High is. Because I'm telling you, hell is coming, brothers. Before we get the kingdom, yes. hell and destruction is coming to Babylon the Great. Okay? Because a major, major catastrophic event is going to hit this earth. Okay? It's going to be a major earthquake that's going to hit. Okay? Before. We get delivered out of Babylon the Great. Hell is going to take place in this country. Go ahead. And I will hearken unto you. And the Most High is going to hearken to us when we have to pray unto the Most High. Continue. And ye shall seek me. And we're going to seek the Most High. Continue. And find me. And we're going to find the Most High. we got to find him. All right? So we shall seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be open unto you. All right? Continue. When ye shall search for me with all your heart. See, when we shall search for the Most High with all our hearts, we have to search for the Most High. And how do we do that? Some of us have been to all forms of religions, philosophy, doctrines. Some of us have been out there searching. Some of us have been in Islam. Some of us have been uh, Buddhist. No ringer, no ringer. No, 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 no. Some of us have been Rastamacha and all this nonsense. Some of us have been Allah, Allah, Allah. Right? So must be to every philosophy because we were searching for the most high. But now we have found the most high. Go ahead, Kalak. Verse 14. And I will be found of you. And the most high said, I will be found of you. Go ahead. Save the most high. Save the most high. Continue. And I will turn away your captivity. And I will turn away your captivity. Continue. And I will gather you from all the nations. See? The most high said, I will gather you from all the nations. Go ahead. 
and from all the places where I have driven you. And from all the places where the most I have driven us, the islands, Central America, South America, Africa, uh, China, Japan, the Philippines, okay, down in Australia, we scatter all over the face of the earth. Wherever you go, you'll find an Israelite. Okay, in India, down in India, okay, you have Israelites down there. And you all know about that, right? You know the cities. In India, there's a whole community of Israelites that live in India. Speaking Indian, speaking uh, Hindi, uh, speaking like an Indian. And when I go there, I go there, I go there. Okay? Talk just like Indians, like the East Indians. Okay? It's a whole community of Israelites that live in India. Okay? Go check it out one of these days and you'll see. Go ahead, Kalak. Save the Most High. Save the Most High. Go ahead. And I will bring you again into the place whence I caused you to be carried away captive. You see that? So that's the promise the Most High made with us. There's more to that? Okay, from there go to Jeremiah uh, 46. Jeremiah 46. We're going to start from uh, the 26, uh, 27 verse. Two more scriptures and I'm going to pass the mic around. Jeremiah 46 and 27. Jeremiah chapter 46, verse 27. But fear not them. So the most I said, he said, fear thou not, O Jacob. Don't fear of what's coming. Don't fear. You have the most as your guide, and you have to trust in the most high. Believe in the most high. Know that he's your protector and he's your deliverer. And he's gonna stand and protect you in these evil days. Continue. Oh, my servant Jacob. Oh, my servant Jacob. We are the servants of the Most High. Continue. And be not dismayed. And don't be dismayed of what you see is going to come upon this earth. Go ahead. Oh, Israel. Oh, Israel. Oh, Yashar Allah. Continue. For behold, I will save thee from afar off. See? Most High said, I will save you from afar off. And we're far off from our homeland. Continue. And thy seed from the land of their captivity. Check that out. And your seed from the land of their captivity. The Most High is always talking about captivity. Why? Because we're in captivity. We got some God, sir. I'm not, I'm, I'm, we're not slaves. I'm, I'm, a, I'm an independent person. I have my own job. Listen, all of us in captivity. Whether you work for yourself or you work for the devil, we're still in captivity. You can't escape it. Every last one of us, from the richest, I talk about, I got my money. Whose money is that on that money? Whose face is on that money? Whose right is on that money? Yes. Yes. See, the point he's making, he's right about that. The most I said, we're going to be redeemed without money. Right? This is slavery for us. Okay? Some of us have to work. That's slavery. Some of us have their own business. That's slavery. Because you still got to set up your business by way of the government, right? And also, you got the high paid, high paid slaves, LeBron James and so forth, those, those higher paid athletes, high paid athletes, those are high paid slaves. That's all they are. So, Ben's right. It's all slavery, no matter how you look at it. Come? Uh, all right. Hey, when you work for yourself, you got to work what? Harder. You have to put in more energy into it because if you don't, it's going to fall through. And you still got to get out there and hustle. So we still hustling and busting just to survive in this hellhole. All right? So it's still captivity, no matter how you look at it. I don't care if you got a million dollars, it's still captivity. Okay? Continue. And Jacob shall return. And Jacob shall return. The Most High said, you shall return. I know someone said, no, I don't want to return. I want to stay in America because I'm a Democrat. I'm a Republican. We're not none of those things. We got a good America. All right, continue. And be in rest and, and peace. Be at, and be at rest and peace. When you're at rest, man, you don't have to worry about nothing. And when you're at peace, your soul, your spirit, your mind, your body, everything is at peace. Okay? And we're not at rest and peace here in this country. All right? Because you have to worry about paying your bills, how to survive, how your children is going to make, how uh, you're doing school. If they're going to be hunted down, treated unfairly. If you're going to be uh, used by the system. If they're going to pass draconian laws against you. Is your elected officials going to do right by you? 
Are they going to give you reparations? Are they going to steal your money and give it to Israel and Ukraine? And you can't do nothing against it, so how could you be free if you can't stop them? Continue. And none shall make him afraid. And none is going to make us afraid. Nobody's going to make us afraid when the Most High can deliver us and put us back in our land. This one, Trey? Okay, now from there go to Zephaniah. Zephaniah, the third chapter. And this is going to be my last scripture. Je Zephaniah, the third chapter. And you're going to start from the 19th verse. So my subject matter was captivity. Us being delivered out of captivity. Alright? Because that's my spirit and I know that's coming. That's right around the corner. We're not far off. We're not 10 years. We're not 20 years. We're right around the corner. Alright? I would like to give a date. I would like to say when, but I'm not going to do that. Okay? But in my spirit, I know it's not far. I'll tell you like this, it's not no 10 years. I don't always say five years, all right? But I'm gonna leave it as that, but we're close. We're very close, all right? Uh, Zephaniah 3 and 19. Zephaniah chapter three, verse 19. Behold, at that time will I undo all that afflict thee. So the most I said, behold, he will undo all that afflict us. And we have been afflicted as a people. I will undo all that afflict thee. Go ahead. And I will save her that haunts me. And the most I said, I will save her that haunted me. When you're in the military, right? And you marching, right? And the drill, and the, and the drill sergeant and the drill said, Hard march! And you marching. <laughs> left, right, left, right, go! We have ceased as a nation of people from being. So we have haunted, that's what it means to be haunted, to be lame, to be restricted. We have stopped from being a people, a nation of people. So the most High said, I will save her that haunted. And when that drill started to give that order, hold! You gotta stop. You can't be mumbling and moving around. When he said, march, left, right, left, right, march. And he said, hold company! So we have haunted as a people, as a nation. Even those of us that seem to be conscious, Right? Because even some of our conscious people still haven't come to the ultimate truth. Right? But you ever seen Dr. Umar Johnson? He's a very conscious brother, but he still haven't come to the understanding. But he has some good points. He was making a speech one time. He said, what the hell are we voting for? He said, we're not Democrats nor Republicans. But that's what he said. We're Africans. We should be voting. He had that understanding. You understand? We're not Democrats or Republicans. But he's a Pan-African, he believes in that. But he's gonna to come to realize the truth before America goes out. All right, so continue, uh, Raka, uh, Raka. And gather her that was driven out. And gather her that was driven out, and we were driven out. Okay, continue. And I will get them praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame. So the most I said, he will give us fame and praise in every land that we have been put to shame. That we have been put to shame in this country. Whatever we've been scattered to, we've been put to shame. We've been made mockery of, degraded, looked down upon, scorned. All right? Continue. At that time will I bring you again. So the most I said, at that time I will bring you again. Bring you from what? The land of our captivity. Go ahead. Even in the time that I gather you. Even in the time that he's going to gather us. Go ahead. For I will make you a name and a praise among all people See? of the earth. And that's going to happen before we leave out of here. Continue. When I turn back in captivity before your eyes, save the most high. So the most I said. So with that, I say shalom. And that's going to take place in our lifetime. Shalom. <laughs> All praise. Come on, let's put our hands together. Give the Lord the glory. We spoke well in the spirit. We spoke well in Shabbat Shalom. And we had the blessings of Shabbat. And may the Most High smile upon you and grant you peace during this time. We're going to need his peace. We're going to need his peace. These are sombering times. These are sobering times. We've been warned. It's time to take heed.
it's time to take heed to the warnings. All the scriptures, even what Elder Ben Yum Yum has said, this gathering, everything, all this is symbolism to what's to come. They're trying times and perilous times, times worse than what we've endured up until this point is coming, beloved. And it's time to take heed to the warnings. There's a constant theme in the scriptures, and it speaks to the warning of what's to come. Give me the book of Matthew 6 and verse 9. And we're not going to go into what's on the paper right now. It's Elder and Young. I'm kind of moving in the spirit because we need to be led by the spirit. It was the spirit that led us out of captivity. It was the spirit that moved across the waters and created everything that we see here today. It's the spirit that we're going to need. It's not going to be knowledge. It's not a bunch of knowledge because knowledge puffs up. We need to start handling this truth lawfully. Because you can have the truth and mismanage it. How many of us have had the truth and seen people with the truth for a long time now, but they're mismanaging the truth. They're mismanaging the law. They're handling the law unlawfully. So just because you have the law doesn't mean that you're lawful with it. You're being warned, beloved. All right? Read what you got, Kalaka. Matthew chapter 6 verse 9 After this manner therefore pray ye Our Father which art in heaven Hallowed be thy name Thy kingdom come Thy will be done in We earth. need to understand that his will is going to be done It be done It's done It's going to be established And we have to take heed to the warning If we want to be part of that Just because nationally we're Israel Doesn't mean that we're going to be Israel in the kingdom. You can be on the outside looking in. As our foreparents, how many people made it out of the wilderness? And if you don't embrace your wilderness period correctly through obedience, strict observance, and being led by the Spirit, then you would have handled the truth unlawfully. It would have been right there in your face and you didn't do anything with it. Read. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Come on. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive give us our debts as we forgive our debtors. We're going to be praying these prayers. And for those of us that pray these prayers and are actualizing it, this is not going to stop until Jacob's troubles are, is over. We're going to be praying these prayers. And these words are going to have so much more impact in the days to follow than you ever believe. Read. And lead us not into temptation. So in other words, in the Hebrew mindset, though this is more of an English translation, but he doesn't lead people into sin. But he's telling us, don't allow it or don't let temptation, don't let us enter into temptation. Because too many of us have willingly entered into temptation, they call it our test. The prayer is to watch and pray that she enter not into temptation. Many of us have entered into temptation. Then you say, I'm being tested. No, you were, you were brought there by your own lust. Because you've been born. And we know what James says, once the lust is conceived, then there's sin. So we have to make sure and take heed to these warnings that the Heavenly Father has left us through His Son, Yahweh Shah. Remember, it's His government. It's His government. It's the government that's on His shoulders. Yahweh, why Yahweh shot? Not any man's government. Ain't no one man gathering nobody, no way. It's by the spirit of Yahweh. It's always been a spirit. Because men claim to be mighty. They claim to be strong. They, they have all these degrees. But it's by his spirit. And it's his own spirit. You'll know them in these last days by their fruit. For those of us that take heed to the warning. Read on. But deliver us from evil. But do what? But deliver us from evil. Deliver us from evil. We have learned to do evil over and over again with each captivity. And as the world is waxing worse, it's getting worse. The lack of morality in this world is worse and worse. And the temptation and influences of the world are at a high intensity. It's not time to be gay in America. And we're too happy. 
America too gay. They're too happy. Too happy. But we need to be content in these instructions that the Heavenly Father has given us, these warnings. And that's going to be our safety. What do they say, Elder Brock? Wisdom and knowledge should be the stability of our times. Too many of us are unstable because we're entering into temptation. Read on. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. So, beloved, make sure that you're taking heed to the warning and that you're not entering into the temptation. Because the law handled lawfully, I just want to go quickly into a Torah portion, which is Deuteronomy 13 and verse 1. Okay, there's nothing new under the sun. All these warnings, the Most High is asking us to take heed, is warning before what? Destruction. So let's make sure that we're taking heed to the warnings and that we stop committing self-inflicting wounds. A lot of the wounds we have are self-inflicted. You can't go everywhere as an Israelite. You set apart. You're different than everybody else. You're holy people. You can't fraternize with every Tom, Dick, and Harry. You can't be seen everywhere talking about you trying to win souls. You ain't gonna win. Yeah, you, you ain't gonna win no soul with your soul that's already condemned. You're not gonna win the soul of the dead. Amashi, I can never instruct nobody to go to a graveyard of condemned people and resurrect them. For example, remember the fig tree? Remember the dead fig tree? And he cursed it. Come on, but, but what happened? It wasn't all the way dead when he first cursed it, was it? But then when they came back to it, the disciples said, Yeah, was shot. This, this fig tree is all the way dead now. See? So, so what are you going to gain from a dead fig tree? Nothing. See, you can't, you can't replant. It's nothing. It's dead forever. That's it. It's gone. So it's cursed. So that's why you, uh, you are a good fig tree, then you got to be a uh, plant. You should be uh, casting out seeds, good seeds, so you can receive uh, uh, fruit in the most size kingdom. Come. Seven. Who wastes seeds? Who wastes seeds? If you know ground is stony, why would you plant it there? Why would you plant it there, knowing that it's stony? It, it doesn't make no sense. Read on. Scott, give me a Deuteronomy 13 and 1. Deuteronomy chapter 13, verse 1. If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and giveth thee a sign or a wonder. This is the gravity of the enticement. This is the level. A lot of us think that it's, I can easily see it. Oh, the influences out here, these spirits, they intensify. A lot of Israelites are compromising. Yeah, I, got, yeah, I know. I know. I, well, it's not so bad. You know, he, he may like men. Maybe, you know, I, I can, you know, kind of still romanticize that ideology. No, you can't. It's cut and dry. You'll be put to death, mom, dad, daughter, auntie, bestie, all of them. You get put to death. Read on. And the sign or the wonder come to pass. If the sign and the wonder come to pass, what's we a generation? Don't we seek for a sign? Aren't we that generation? We love a sign. And we get influenced, we get enticed, and then we enter in. Take heed to the warning. Read on. Whereof he spake unto thee, saying, let us go after other gods. Let us follow other authorities. Let us vote. We're going to vote our way out of this. We're going to march our way out of this. We're going to sing our way out of this. You ain't doing nothing. You're going to obey your way out of this. You're going to keep these commandments and enter into the land. That's how you get out of this. Read on. Which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet. You won't listen. What is saying in the last days? Many false prophets are going to arise, and we're seeing it. And we think that we can, it's obvious. It's not obvious. Signs and wonders are going to happen. Take heed to the warning. 
a lot of us are being enticed now and ain't seen no signs of wonder. They talk a good game. Leading all these men astray. I'm this, I'm that. You ain't nothing. You ain't even, you ain't even done this. You ain't even manifest up there, dude. You ain't even manifest with moving by the Spirit. We ain't even, you ain't even manifest no works that would deceive the people and people deceived already. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, the point about where he brought out about we enter into temptation. You enter into a temptation yourself. The most high is not leading you into temptation. You enter into it yourself through your sins, cunt, or your lust, cunt. So that's why in James uh, 4, what does it say? Ye ask and receive not, because ye ask and miss, that ye may consume it upon your lust. Cunt? Cunt? You, that's why you enter into temptation yourself. And so therefore, you got all kinds of demons around you, all kinds of spirits around you, because you went into temptation yourself. The most I didn't lead you there. Come. So, so therefore, now what you have to do? You have to what? Refrain from temptation. You have to do it. You can't put that on the most high. You can't even put that on the devil. That's right. How about it? You can't even put it on Satan. <laughs> right? Because out of lust, you went into it. Okay, cut, right up. Cut, read on. Verse 3. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams. For the most high your power proveth you. He do what? Proveth you. He tests you. But he's testing you. He warns you. And now he's giving you a test to see if you're going to take heed to the warning. But he's not testing you with evil. He didn't make you do that. You enter down there. I'm in the midst of folly. Oh, yeah, this, this must be the most high. He knows what I want. Come on, read on. To know whether he loves the most high your power. To know if you love him or you love what you lust after. Read on. With all your heart and with all your soul. Because great is going to be the temptation. But greater is he who's able to deliver you out of the temptation. There's no temptation that has taken a man that which is common. And with the temptation, there's always a way of escape. A lot of us don't look for the escape route. You'd be like, oh, he got me. They accept it. Read on. I'm almost done. He shall walk after the most high your power. You shall do what? Walk after the most high your power. The straight and narrow. The straight gate. Read. Not the, not the gay one. Not the happy one. Not where you happy, but where you straight may be difficult. Read on. And fear him. And fear him. Read on. And keep his commandments. And do what? Keep his commandments. Y'all say it together. And do what? And keep his commandments. Ain't nothing changed. That's the way that we fight entering in temptation. What did Yahweh try to do? He got tested. Moses got tested. You're not going to be greater than your master. You're going to be as your master. Peter got tested. Everybody, all the disciples, everybody got tested. Read on. And obey his voice. And obey his voice. Read on. And ye shall serve him and cleave unto him. And ye shall do what? Serve him and cleave And cleave. We're going to need to cleave, beloved, like never before with these times. The enticement and the intensity, I'm just warning you, is getting greater than before. So start to examine yourself and see if you're equipped in these last days to endure the temptation. With that, I say shalom. Okay. Hallelujah! 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 All right, so next brother, we got uh, Chalamar with us. He's gonna go next. Uh, yeah, because he's gonna cry, so he's gonna go next. Then. Hallelujah. 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 All right now. Hope y'all ain't tired. Man, first of all, let's give a round of applause. Another round of applause for the spirit that just came out.
may be different than the challenges that your neighbor or your brother or your sister is going to go through. But they are no greater. They're no more prevalent. Don't count your brother or your sister's challenges, right, soft or easier than yours. Your challenges, as difficult as they might seem to you, are ch your neighbor's and your sister and your brother's challenges is exactly the same. So, when we come in together in uh, a forum like this, in an opportunity, a family reunion like this, in an opportunity to see one another, when we see one another, what is the word of greeting that we give one another? Shalom. I can't hear you. Shalom. 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 Let me have Psalm 37, 37. Psalm 37, 37. Psalms chapter 37, verse 37. Mark the perfect man and behold the upright, right? For the end of that man is peace, right? For the end of that man is peace. The end of that man is shalom. The, per the perfection that we seek to obtain is a life of shalom. And that only can be obtained if that's what you sow. That will be the only way you can reach shalom. Everybody say that? If you don't sow shalom, you will not reach shalom. If you sow heartache and pain and problems and situations, and, then that's what you're going to reap. And you can't tell me, you can't say the most I is unfair. Because you planted the seed that gave you that tree. There were many trees in the garden, huh? You can't be plant an evil tree, you're going to get a, what, an evil fruit. And you can't be mad at that. Even in a time when normally you would have. What am I talking about? Let's get uh, let's get uh, 1 Samuel 16 and verse 23. Let me show you. 1 Samuel 16 and verse 23. Our, our uh, elder uh, David and Saul had a conflict, kind of. They had an issue with one another. Saul didn't like that David was rising up. He didn't like the fact that the shines wasn't going to be on him anymore. So Satan entered into his heart. Read what you got. First Samuel chapter 16, verse 23. And as he talked with them, right, behold, they came up to champion the Philistine of God, Goliath by name. Hold on, first Samuel. 1623. Oh, it's a lot. Come. 16 verse 23. Come. And it came to pass right. when the evil spirit from the Most was upon Saul. When the what? When the evil spirit of the Most High was upon Saul. What's an evil spirit? You might ask. An evil spirit. A spirit is a thought. It's an attitude. Right? It's an emotion that's out of place. That's all an evil spirit is. So when you have an evil spirit, anybody have an evil spirit on them at any time? Anybody? I'll raise my hand alone if I, nobody else had one. I've had an evil spirit on me. I guess I don't know what it was. Right? It's okay. I got cast out. Right? So when that evil spirit was upon Saul, Saul was king of Israel. He wouldn't just anybody. Right? And when that evil spirit came upon Saul, read. That David took in harp. He took a what? In harp. He took a musical instrument, read. And played with his hand. And he played with that musical instrument, read. So Saul was refreshed. So Saul was what? Refreshed. So Saul was refreshed. Read. And was well. And he was what? Well. And he was well. He was healed. What was he healed from? And the evil spirit departed from him. From that evil spirit left off of him. And he was so much better now. David did not take on that evil spirit that was on Saul. What Saul wanted to kill David. But instead of uh, David taking a position of, oh, you don't like me? Well, I don't like you either. Oh, you want to hurt me? Well, I want to hurt you first. Which a lot of us do. That's our first reaction. Oh, they, they want to do me wrong? I'm going to do you wrong. 
part of it. <laughs> right? But the father, but we have an example here. David saw the evil spirit on Saul and said, you know, I'm going to pick up this harp and I'm going to take that spirit off of him. I'm going to bless him and heal him. I'm going to restore him. Even though he hate me, I'm going to restore him. How much of us can do that? How much of us can give shalom to someone that wishes you wrong? Because in order for you to do that, you've now entered into the perfection. But the Bible said, mark the perfect man. For the end of that man is shalom. Brothers and sisters, if we're looking to go towards perfection, we can't get there without sowing and reaping shalom. First Peter 3 and verse 8, Bible of Shalom. Oh yeah. That's another level. Right? We coming together. Y'all say, gather yourselves together, whole nation, not the side, kind. Did he tell us to gather together, kind? So now we're in the same room. What are we going to do now? Right? Are we going to be in the same room and side eye and look over and not wonder and wonder, you know what, you know, I don't know them brothers. You know what I mean? Them brothers, you know. You know what I mean? You know, envy your brother Garmin. You know, I'm a little envious of this Garmin right here. This thing is fresh. Right? But I love him for it. Right? I even love checking off that meat tree, man. I got to retire mine. Right? I'm going to love you for what you do well. Right? And I'm going to pray for what you don't do well. And I'm going to play my heart for whatever you're failing in. Read the scripture. 1 Peter 3. First Peter chapter 3 verse 8 Go ahead Finally be ye all of one mind Right Having compassion one of another Come on Love as brethren Go ahead Be pitiful Be what? Be pitiful Be pitiful Go ahead Be courteous Be courteous Read Not rendering evil for evil Not doing what? Rendering evil for evil You see David could have rendered evil for evil And he would have been right According to our minds Wouldn't he? This man trying to kill him. If somebody was trying to kill you or ruin you, don't you think you have a right to ruin them back? <laughs> Not in this kingdom. Not in this kingdom, you don't. Not when you're amongst your family, you don't. You don't have that right. I can't get you back. All I can do is play my heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, to go on and piggyback on what he's talking about is uh, let me back. I said piggyback. I'm not mistaken. Let me back. You're right. Uh, <laughs> Galatians 6 and 1. It says, Brother, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be kept. So that's what David was doing. He was trying to restore King Saul. Is restoring his spirit, especially when he played the harp. Gun restoration is what we're looking for now. The most I don't want to tear one another apart. He wants to restore the brother, restore the brotherhood. Gun restoration is what we should be looking for. Understand? So if we're not going to restore our brother, then what are you going to do? By default, you're going to destroy him. Okay? By default, you're going to cast him down if you're not looking to restore him. Even if he come and get you wrong, you forgive him 70 times 7. If he come and get you, look to restore him. Take him aside. And then communicate. See how you can restore one another in the spirit of meekness. So David looked to restore King Saul. So that's a very good point. Huh? Go ahead. Have we out? We out? First time. Not rendering evil for evil. Uh -huh. Or railing for railing. Right? But contrary to what? Now here's the most important thing. Because some of us say, well, I'm not going to do him nothing. I'm not going to do her nothing back. I'm just not going to talk to him. Right. I'm just not going to say nothing. What does scripture say, read? But contrary wise. But contrary wise, read? Bless him. Bless him. And that's what David did. David blessed Saul with the sound of that heart. He blessed him that he may be well. He didn't say, well, I'm just going to not say nothing to the brother. Let him, let him continue with his foolishness. Right? He could have had that attitude. A lot of us get that attitude. Get that spirit. Get 
that emotion, well, I'm not going to deal with them because they're not dealing with me right. But the Father said, not in my kingdom. In his kingdom, right? Kingdom is a, a junction word, conjunction word. Two words, king's dominion. That means the king, who's the king? Yahusha. Yahusha, right? The ways of the king has dominion over you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's when you're in the kingdom. Wait a second, what are we supposed to do with the kingdom? What are we supposed to do with the kingdom? Hold on, give me Luke 17 and verse 20. Because a lot of us waiting on the kingdom. But I haven't come across that scripture yet. I'm looking for it. Right? We ye on the kingdom. Anybody got that verse? Let's see what the word, let's see what the scripture said about the kingdom. Give me uh, Luke. Luke chapter 17, verse 20. Read it. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees, Right. When the kingdom of the Most High should come, come on. he answered them and said, what he said, The kingdom of the Most High cometh not with observation. Let's go. Neither shall they say, Lo here or lo there. Let's go. For behold, the kingdom of the Most High is within you. It's where? Within you. I'm looking at the kingdom. I am the kingdom. You are the kingdom. You waiting for the kingdom? I'm waiting for you. The kingdom is within you. It's your choice to bring it up. Another point he says, the kingdom of heaven, what? Suffereth what? Violence. Wait a minute. How can the kingdom suffer violence if it's not a people? It's you. You're suffering violence. Come. Huh? When is the king going to have dominion over you? And you let nothing else rule you. When that's going to happen? Ben said he can smell it, man. We almost out of here. I back him on that one. I was, I was feeling that way in 21. <laughs> I've, been, I've been smelling the kingdom since uh, 99. But I'm going to keep smelling it. Right? Now the priest always tells me that this may be our last Passover. I say, you're right every time. Every time he's right. Every year he's right. I'm never going to say you're wrong. This may be our last Passover. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to stand that every time. Because there's no greater gift than the promise that was given unto Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaqua, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. There's no greater gift. Waiting on that gift. But while we're here, and while we're now, and while we count the present as a gift, let us manifest the kingdom within ourselves. Let's learn from our forefathers in the scriptures. David played the harp. If you get anything out of what I'm going to say to you today, David played the harp when he was faced with adversity. He healed the person that sought to hurt him. Can we keep bless the person that wished for his wrong? If you can do that, then you have the kingdom manifested in you. Until you can do that, you're not in the kingdom. And you have to understand, it's on you. It's on each and every one of us in this room. The power of music, you know, I came up earlier and I, I sung a song, and because uh, music is powerful. It puts us in the right mindset. Sometimes we fight in a battle, but we under a lot of incantations, a lot of spells have been cast on us through the sounds and the things we allow to enter into our vessel. So when we go to think a clear thought or have a good intention, it's marred from the things that we heard and, and we, we, we allow to live within our heart. Because the song don't go like that in this kingdom, right? The song goes what? You know, you jack him and jack you, you know what I mean? Um, uh, the song goes, I don't need nobody, I'm here for myself. That's, that's, that's the hot track, right? The hot track is, for our sisters, I don't need a man. That's the hot track, right? Where's a song in the radio now that's telling you, all I want to do is humble myself to my husband? I, what, is that on the chart? I'm waiting for that song. All I want to do is humble myself to my husband. Come on, where the song right is at? All I want to do is humble myself to my husband. I act like one sometimes, but I'm not a sinner. Right? Let's give um, 1 Chronicles 25, verse 1. 
That'd be my last set of verses. Now, pass it on to the mighty Mark. All right. Oh no, who's going next, Bam? All right, up oh, the mighty Bam. Oh shit. Go to the first ground here next. Go ahead. First Chronicles chapter twenty-five, verse one. Let's go. Moreover, mm -hmm. David and the captains of the host separated to the service of the sons of Asaph. Go ahead. And of Harmon, a heaven, and of Jonathan, who should prophesy with heart. He should do what? Prophesy with heart. He was so concerned. He knew the power of the heart. What's the power of the heart that he showed? It can heal someone. David was so concerned with healing that he, he put Asaph and all that followed him. He, he appointed them the the um the office of prophesying with music. This is how important this was. Because it would bring healing to the nation. It would bring a spirit and a mindset. We all know music brings a spirit, huh? Right? You know, you might be at the at the gym, right? You're gonna play a certain music to get pumped up, to get ready to do your workout, huh? You might be with your lady and you got some some uh, you know some bubbly, you know what I mean? Or you got a little you know a little wine or a little liquor because it's quicker, right? And you might want to play a little music to set the mood. Go ahead. Hey, but he's right about that. When you read the scriptures real quick, you know the King David had an orchestra, and his orchestra in the temple. He had thousand brothers on the trumpet, thousands of priests on, on uh, uh, the uh, string instruments, the harp, thousands of brothers on uh, other instruments, the horns and everything. David had a whole orchestra that he developed for the temple and the praise and worship of the Most High. Come. So go show how powerful, like you're saying, how music is powerful, man. And in this world, it's, it's the opposite. It's, it's through Satan, come. And see how it sways our people to do all kinds of evil? Music is powerful. So we want to now take the music now and bring it back to the righteous side, the way David had it come. All right, all right. All right. All right. All right. I agree, said love and happiness. Right. How mad could you be when you hear that? Right? That, that, that breaks the whole vex spirit. Right. Love and happiness. Right. So we have to lessons that we lived. It's not, nobody got to teach you this. You lived it. Did you notice it is the question. Because you all lived this. You heard a song that changed your, your demeanor and your mind. So you were able to deal within that moment, within that spirit that came out of that melody. Well, the Bible says this is true. And we have proof. And we're proving it according to the text in the word of the Most High. Read on. With salt reads. And with symbols, right? And the number of the workmen according to their service was mm -hmm. of the sons of Asaph, Sakar, and Joseph, and Nathan Ayah, and Asarela, and the son of the sons of Asaph, under the hands of Asaph, which prophesied according to the order of the king. Right? Go ahead. Of uh, Jedathan, the sons of Jedathan, Gedaliah. And Zerub and Jeshiah. Hash, you, can, you can jump down to uh, verse 6. Verse 6. All these were under the hands of their father for Saul in the house of the Most High. Read that again. All these were under the hands of their father for Saul in the house of the Most High. Read. With symbols, psalteries, and hearts for the service of the house of the Most High, according to the king's order to Asaph. Jonathan and heaven. Right, so they were all in order under their fathers. Meaning that somebody had to begin this process. And his children that came after it followed after it. We have a responsibility to establish things. Most of you are the first generation of Israelite in your family. That means the tradition start with you. Hallelujah. The next, uh, the next generation that's coming is an offspring of your works, your thoughts, and your deeds. Give an inheritance. He said, a, a, a righteous man leave an inheritance unto his children. 
A lot of us think about that and we automatically think money, right? Hey, money is good, don't get me wrong, because they need it, right? Lord, they need it, man. Right? Oh, you got those? They need that money, don't they? Oh, boy. They need it. <laughs> right, one or the other. They need it, but they also more so need the culture, the traditions that were built off of these words, the law, statutes, and commandments. They need it. Because when they go out into the world, they're going to be fed the same madness, right, that you was fed. And you have to give them a leg up and say, no, not in my house. In my house, there's no power like your house. Great king of the universe. And he always does wondrous things. Let all Israel say amen. amen. That's got to be in their spirit. You got to put it there. Right? So they can win against this battle against sin. And with that, I will bring up the next mighty speaker. The water for your time. Thank you. Noah, what you doing building that big boat? What you doing over there? 
but mocking him as they mock the prophets today. That's why you see so many prophets out on the streets today. Right? You see mighty prophets bearing Israel to come back to the marriage. Right? But they mocking the prophets. Why are they going out? Why are you yelling at people? Why are you yelling at people, Zaquan, when you go out? Right? They said we yelling at people. No, we compelling them to come into the marriage. Do not lose that faith. In the book of Acts, it says that through great tribulation, we're going to enter into the kingdom. Noah had faith. So as we start reading these scriptures, as Elder Ben and Elder Yach and, 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 and all these scriptures that we read in the promises to come, have that faith. That's where that faith comes in. So as we're mocked, even the sisters, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Why y'all wearing those dresses? What are those, those things in the border of your dresses? We royalty. That's what that is. God? Let's go back to the book of 1 Peter. All praise. Let's go back to the book of 1 Peter. We're going to go to chapter 3. But Baba Kashan, if you could, let's start at verse... Give me verse 14. Remember, he said, because I've seen your righteousness, now you and your family can enter into the ark. Go ahead, up. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 14. And, but, and if ye suffer for righteousness' sake. So lock it. Stop right there. Read that again. But, and if ye suffer for righteousness' sake. See that? We're going to suffer for righteousness' sake. Read Happy are ye, mm -hmm. and be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled, but sanctify the most high power in your hearts. In your what? In your hearts. In your mind, right? So we're not of this world, right? This world is not of us, but it will be belonging to us soon, right? So you got to suffer in righteousness. Read on. And be ready always to give an answer to every man that acts as a reason, acts of you, a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. With what? Meekness and fear. You royalty, man. Right? We're coming back to our heritage. As they mock the prophets, the prophets are bidden in the marriage, man. They have more camps today than there's been in three years. That's right. I rejoice in that, like it says in, in Philippians, man. I, I therefore rejoice because Christ is preached. Y'all my brothers, man. Right? You can call me. You can rely on me, man. I'm a servant of the Most High God. I serve Yasha Allah. Same way the uh, elders serve Yasha Allah. Right? So we got to serve each other. Right? Keep reading on. Having a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you uh -huh. as of evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse you, your good conversation. Man, I don't like the camps, man. They go on the streets and they yell at people, right? But they don't understand the sacrifice that we do, that we make. That's cool. We do it in righteousness and suffer that righteous and righteousness sake, which is a Mashiach Yahweh, right? Keep reading. For it is better if the will of the Most High be so, mm -hmm. that ye suffer for well-doing than for evil doing. Right, and that's the point. You suffer it for well-doing. What are you telling me? The, the, Christ said to do this. How come you're going against what Christ said? Who am I going to listen to? Christ or the one scoffing us? The one saying we're doing evil? I think y'all know the answer, right? Keep reading on for Christ also have once suffered for sins. You see that? Read. The just for the unjust. The just or the unjust. Read on. That he might bring us to the Most High. That he might bring us into the Most High. Again, we failed the Most High, but now his suffering, now we can come back to the Most High. Read on. Being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. By which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison. Hold on. He did what? He went and preached unto the spirits in prison. That's how you know a great civilization, a great empire is going to fall. The prophets are back in the corners, bidding them to the marriage, man. Right? So 
as they mock you and speak evil of you, understand that they're the same to the king. And now he's sitting at the right hand of the father, awaiting his time for us to get the kingdom back. Because guess what we got next? Come on. We got next? Right? From there, let's go to Ephesians, man. Uh, Ephesians chapter 3, verses 19. All praise to the most. Yeah, Ephesians 3 and 17. God. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 17. Uh huh. That Christ may dwell in your hearts. He may dwell where? In your hearts. So that suffering he did, understand he did it for you. Understand he was mocked as well. They plucked his beard out of his face. Right? He suffered those things. And some of you may need to suffer as well. Right? But what he say, those who find his life, they're going to lose it. But those who lose their life for my name's sake, they're going to what? Find it. I believe in his word, man. Con? Because check this out. Everything he, he mentioned was fulfilled. Everything he already, already came to pass. There's only a few prophecies left. Right? That's how you know that countdown is coming. Right? They bickering and fighting amongst each other. Babylon hate itself. Right? Like it says in Revelation 7, uh, they all hated Babylon. The great whore, Babylon. Right? So understand that the, you ain't got to be a biblical expert to understand this. The time is now. Right? Finish that off. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, mm -hmm. that ye be rooted and grounded in love. And what? In love. You know, he said that uh, those who love each other, they're my disciples, man. Right? We got to show ourselves approved to the Most High God. And how do we do that? By loving each other, loving the Most High God, like he said, the two greatest commandments. Right? With that, I yield. Kwam Yashala. Kwam Yashala. All right. Kwam Yashala. So how are we doing? All right. Everybody getting restless, huh? I bet. So we have Shalom all come back up? Huh? Okay, but this is a Sabbath service. You gotta remember when Ezra, when Ezra, most I had Ezra teach our people what from uh, sun up to sundown, come? The laws, the statutes, the commandments of the most high. So you just gotta endure it. So Elder Zaquan is next, Elder Zaquan. Oh, okay. Uh, all praise to the Most High, uh, Yahweh, Yahweh Shah. Um, I'm going to try to land me back on these uh, these great brothers right here. I mean, I, I know it's going to be a tough one to uh, beat, but, um, you know, this is a hell of a week, man. I'm going to tell you straight up, this is one hell of a week. You know, um, by the show of hands, how many, how many people went through something this week? There you go. I knew I wasn't by myself. Hey, La Prime, I knew I wasn't crazy. Okay, give me the book of uh, Romans, uh, Kalak, uh, give me the book of Romans uh, 8 and 35. Yeah, the spirit of Satan is rolling thick out here, more so than ever, I'm going to tell you. I looked at the face of Satan for three days. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you straight up, I'm going to tell you straight up. You know, it was no easy thing, I'm going to tell you, all right? But this is what we signed up for right here. This is what we signed up for, but the love of the most high and the love of your house shot is going to keep us together. Ain't no way in hell I can be mad at my brother. This, look, the instructions was left in the book right here for us not to be miserable, for us not to have contention with one another, for us not to be mad at one another. Okay, if you believe in this book, ain't no way in hell, okay, I'm gonna be mad at one of y'all. If you believe in this book, okay, it's no way I can be mad at my brother Shalom about believing in this book right here. Because the most high, he separates all of that right there. And it feels good when you can go to your brother and you can make amends, you know, to your brother. Because that's the right thing to do. All right, but if you still got animosity towards your brother, okay, after you squash something, okay, something wrong with you, man. You don't believe in this book, okay? You don't believe in this book. Ain't no way, look, if you believe in this book, there's no way, okay, that I can be mad at you, man. There's no way I can be mad at you. All right, I love each and every one of y'all out here. Hey, listen, if I offended any of y'all, hey, listen, let's go outside afterwards and I'll apologize to you. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. There you go. Yeah, you may see me outside, right? Yeah, I figured you, you will say that. 
Okay, but there's no way. There's no way you can do that. Give me the book of Romans, um, eight, um, Colossians eight and thirty-five. Romans chapter eight, verse thirty-five. Yes, sir. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? There you go, right there. Nothing on this planet. I don't care what you go through. All right, you shouldn't be frowned up against okay, your brother. Okay, you shouldn't be frowned up or mad at your sister. The damn white man got you working ten and twelve hours a day. Okay, get mad at him. All right. White House, they teach you, they still teach your kids in school. George Washington was the greatest man to walk this earth. He had an apple fall on his head. Okay, he went to his father and said, Are you cut down the apple tree, Dad? Get mad at your damn teachers, man. I don't see nobody protesting that. You tell your kids to go to school every day. Who's protesting the teachers that's lying to your kids, man? But yet still, you can look at your brother, look at your sister, frowned up in the damn face, man. You better watch yourself. You better watch yourself in these last days because the most high gonna flip it right back on you. Keep reading, King. Shall tribulation. Tribulation. We all gonna go through that. The hell you think this is, man? This ain't church. Where you go, where you go and eat Popeyes, a damn 60 piece of Popeyes. Okay, you got grease around your mouth like armor roll on your damn tires. You leave them out of there, man. You bug out of your mind, man. This ain't church, man. Satan works differently with us, man. And I'm gonna say that again. Satan works differently with us, man. All right? Long as you out there in them damn streets, you being a damn homosexual, a drag queen, okay? Satan's job is easy. You making it easy for Satan. But as soon as you come back into this truth, man, all right, and deal with your brothers and sisters, that's hard, man. Because now you gotta erase it. You gotta eradicate all the poison that the damn white man and damn devil that taught you, man. And it's hard, man. But through these scriptures and through these instructions, it makes it easy for you, man. Ain't no way in hell I can be mad and shout my brother up in here, man. Not according to the Bible. That means you won't believe in these scriptures, man. You mad, frowned up, your damn lip way up here. Okay, you frowned up at somebody, man. Get mad at Esau, the damn man that got you in slavery, man. Get mad at him. Not your brother or sister, man. What the hell is this? Go ahead, finish reading, gang. Shall tribulation. Tribulation. What you think this is, man? What you think you signed up for? Okay, Glock. Or distress? Or distress. You're going to get distress. That's part of the deal. You're going to get distress. You had work 10 hours, 12 hours a day. That's what the slave master supposed to do to you. Distress the hell out of you. All right? You're not supposed to be distressing one another. All right? If you are, just apologize, make amends, hug each other, and love each other, man. You're not supposed to be distressing one another. I'm leaving here. I'm mad at Elder Mabapoy. I'm not reading these scriptures, man. You ain't believing in this book. If I'm still mad at this man right here, gotta think about that. Go ahead, King. Or persecution. Or persecution. Feels like you're being persecuted. As you walk out your, you walk out your house, uh, uh, pre-shot, things happen to you. You feel, say, look, I felt like I was persecuted for three days. I thought I was dead. I don't know why I'm here right now. I'm telling you, I, I can't believe I'm here right now. I think that, look, I, 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 look, I suffered things this week, man, I was out of sci-fi, man. Yeah, you too, huh? Yeah, you, you too, LL too, right? I ain't the only one. This is what we signed up for, man. This is what we signed up for, Shalomar. There ain't no shock and no marvel, man. Satan's out. He's rolling thick out here, man. But the love is going to keep us together, not hatred, man. Don't hate your brother and sister. You're looking at a, a brother side-eye. You know, you crazy, man. Go to that man like a man and, and apologize to him, man. I, I don't feel, I don't feel it in my bosom if I don't make it right with a brother before he leave here. I can't get no sleep. I can't get no sleep. All right. If I wrote any other bad check in the last past couple years, don't worry about that. It, it, it made clear. But don't be mad at me for that. But right, finish reading, King. Or famine. Yeah, it's not clear. Yeah, go ahead. Or famine. Okay, or famine. Okay, you're gonna go through things, okay? You're gonna go through famine as well, too. Go ahead, King. Or nakedness. Okay, or nakedness. Go ahead. Or peril. Or peril. Go ahead. Or sword. Or sword. All right? He out there, man. He out there killing people. What you think our brother Yahusha went through? He's a black man. They pimped him up. You ain't do nothing. You know he's a black man. Go, let's go to court. Let's go. The Romans still got that same spirit. Why do you think they got, look, why do you think they do the same thing to brothers? Okay, just hey, let's go. They did the same thing to the Yahusha, man. They did the same exact thing to the Yahusha, man. Let's go. Well, what did I do? Nothing. You tell
tell me that was no black man, all right? Same spirit today, but hey, what did I do? What did I do, please? Nothing. They got that same hatred towards you, man. We can't have that amongst each other. Go ahead, uh, Glock, that's it. Go down to 839. Yeah, go down to 839. Yeah, jump straight down. Verse 39, uh, nor height, nor depth, uh, nor any other creature right. shall be able to separate us from the love That's of God. That's right, you better not run from this, man. You better not run from this. All right, this is what you signed up for. You either gonna go left or you gonna go right. And I'm gonna tell you straight up, when you go left, it's death. Straight up. You better live in this thing, you better fight, man. Because I'm telling you, this is this thing. Give me um, the pop, give me um, a please gas that's an apocryphal. And give me on um, eight and five. The spirits is running thick, man. Okay, you gotta fight. We better together than we all part. If a brother come up to you and tell you to separate yourself, okay, from somebody that's in the truth and doing the work, you get the hell away from him, man. If a brother tell you not to salute another man that's doing righteousness and a sister that's doing righteousness in this work, you get the hell away from them, man. All right? The most I say, gather yourselves together, not separate yourselves. Okay, and tell this brother Shalimar, don't deal with the brothers over here in California. Nah, man, they not. You know, they fried chicken don't taste good. I don't believe in that, man. Crazy, man. Crazy, man. All right? Yeah, that ain't what the Bible says. Give me Ecclesiastes 8 and 5, Mark. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 5. Hit it. Reproach not a man. Oh, go ahead. Reproach not a man uh -huh. that turneth from sin. You better watch it. Most I said, you better not. I've been wearing that scripture out all week. Preach y'all. The most, the most I said, you better not read it again, Glock. Reproach not a man. You better, you better not make fun. You better, you better not tease. Go ahead. That turn it from sin. You better watch yourself. All right. A man slip and fall, sister slip and fall, fall on hard times. They going through problems. We supposed to be with each other to learn from this book. That's the instructions right there. It's easy. It's not that hard. Just follow the instructions of the book. It's not that hard. It's not that hard, man. Okay? The most I said, don't reproach a man that turned away from what clock? Turn him away from sin. Go ahead. But remember but that. You better we, remember this right here. Go ahead. That we are all worthy of punishment. You can get it too. You can get it too. What makes you, what makes you, what makes you exempt? Here it is, you've been messing up all week, man. Look, the most I forgave us for some of the dirtiest things that we've done. Okay? You you made it to. Right, you read it right. Read, read it again, King. Okay? Read it loud. Leave my reproach not a man that turned right. from sin. The most I said reproach. Okay, not a, the most I said reproach. The elder Mathapa been stealing my seats. The most I said reproach. Okay, not a man. Okay, and the word reproach, you can look it up yourself. That means tease, that means make fun of. Okay, reproach what? Reproach not a man. The most I said you better watch yourself. Don't be out here teasing people, your brother and sister. They fall on hard times and they're going through just a bad, just something just bad that they can't deal with. The scriptures tell you that we're supposed to comfort one another, not tease one another, man, and make fun of one another. The most I said, don't reproach a man and what? That turn it from sin. You better watch yourself. Don't rejoice. Don't rejoice over that. You better be careful. You may be next. Go ahead. But remember, the most I said, you better remember this right here. Go ahead. That we are all worthy of punishment. Most I said, you can get it too. You can get it too. So you better watch yourself. Would you say, Elder Ben? Get some Yeah, you can come get some of this too. All right? There's nobody exempt. All right? We done messed up with the most high. The most high that took us back. And you frowning up at your brother. You kidding me, man? All the dirt that we done did to the most high and still doing to this day. Most I said he knows now the deepest, darkest secrets. And you mean to tell me the most I that took us back? And there's a way, Shalomar, that the most I said, I still love you. I still want you back. After you did all the dirt and the things that you still doing, and I still want you back. And you mean to tell me I can't forgive you, man? I frowned up at you, tongue my lip way up there at you. I'm riding back home and talking trash about you. You don't believe in this book, man. It's easy. It's not hard. It's easy. What makes it hard is when you don't follow instruction. That's what makes it hard. When you don't got that love in your heart for one another, that's what makes it hard. Because you're full of demons. You're full of Satan. You can't tell me no different. Look, I'm saying it again. If I got off with anybody, okay, meet me outside. Just don't make the line too long. But meet me outside. Don't make the line too long. 
we only got to 12 midnight. All right, just don't make the line too long. Okay, uh, finish reading that. That's the clock. Oh, okay, give me. Um, man, I done went off topic. All right, man, you supposed to have me go off topic. All right, give me uh, Proverbs. Give me Proverbs one and seven. All right, that's the spirit. You know, that's making you, that, that's making each and every day. We close. We close. We we close. I was telling the brothers during the meeting greet. I said when I came in there, there was the most I says in the Bible when he says uh, the earth wax worse as time go on. We came in. This was no GMO food. Transvestite. That 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 stuff that wasn't even heard of. I thought though. Okay, if you don't believe that scripture is true, okay, keep looking at the signs of the end. The most I said as time go on. Okay, this place wax worse and worse. Man. You young sisters and you young brothers that's coming to this thing, it's getting to the point now where you can roll up on somebody in the street, a teenager in the street now. What's your name? How it up? I was at a college. Jake walking around. Jake walking around now. Hey man, what's your name? Give me, give me your idea. What's your name? The, the one that said Judah. I said, damn, what the hell is this, man? That's how you know the generation to come, like Shalomar said, the generation to come. Okay, y'all lucky. It's something about that young generation now to come. Well, y'all get this like we didn't get it. All right? Read the book of Proverbs. Um, what I got you holding? One and, uh, one and seven and read the eight. And that's going to be it for me. Go ahead, okay. Proverbs chapter one, verse seven. Right. The fear of the Most High is the beginning of knowledge. Yep, there you go right there. The Most High said you better fear him. If you, if you don't understand, no knowledge, you get understanding too. All right? That's one of the things. That's one of the, the best things that you can get is understanding. All right? People can read verbatim. You can have a thousand, you can have a forehead about this big, right? Uh, Officer Ryan, Captain Ryan. Okay, you can have a damn forehead this damn big. Okay, and remember every precept, okay, in the book, verbatim. But that don't mean that you got understanding on what you're the best do it all the time. Else not love, you can eat all the bacon in your book. That don't mean they're getting understanding on what they read, man. Get understanding with each other, man. If I offend you, Damn, it wasn't that bad, Papa. You understand what I'm trying to say? Damn, get understanding where I'm coming from, okay? Before you frown your face up and get mad at me, all right? It may not be what you thought it was. It may not be that serious, all right? We're in captivity. We're in hell. We're in the ghetto, the slums, okay? Eating out of trash cans. Our people in hell, man. I don't have time to be mad with nobody. It ain't time for that, man. We ain't got time to be mad with one another, man. We got time to love and bring ourselves back to the most high, okay, and rejoice and love one another, man. All right? It takes up too much time for me to frown and be upset and, 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 and huff and puff and huff and puff and oh, 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 Lord, oh, man, oh, I don't know what the hell you damn do. I can't stand. Get the hell away from me, nigga. I got oh, go. Get, get away from me, man. That takes too much time, man. Okay? It stresses you out, gives you, gives you anxiety, okay? Gives you high blood pressure. If you ain't got it, you're going to get it. You know what I'm saying, little yachts? You're gonna get it. Okay. It just takes too much time. If you look, if you're one of those people that just walk around, the most I said, don't dwell with, a, with an angry person, man. If you're one of those kind of people with Bible that are just mad all the damn time, I'm scared of you, man. I'm scared of people like that. You stay the hell away from me, man. All right, because you ain't gonna throw me in a ditch with you. Misjudgment, misdoing the us, uh, 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 you know, you misjudging the situation, man. You're gonna get you and me both killed. Let's stick with this book right here, love one another, and go to easy ground, okay? And go to way that the most I want us to go. Go ahead, um, Kalak. But fools despise wisdom. Yeah, you know, yeah, the most I said fools what? Despise wisdom. We ain't got to go into a, we ain't got to go into a coattail on that, okay? I'm not calling none of y'all a fool, and then you wouldn't be no fool. You would, look, you, you ain't no fool if you're up in here. <laughs> I'm like, that's it right there. You ain't nobody's fool if you're up in here. Okay, Esau's the biggest fool on his damn earth. Look, the, the, the Ephraim, they've been break dancing for, for the last past 50 years. All of a sudden now they made it out of a sport in the Olympics. It's a break dancing. Olympic, they giving out gold medals for break dancing. Give me a damn break, man. Right? They've been break dancing on four in a row for the last past 50 years. All of a sudden Esau, he was. He's all looking stiff like a damn iron boy. <laughs> what the hell is this, man? And they getting gold medals for that? Go bring back crazy legs from the Bronx and put him in a damn competition. If that's the case.
things, man. Esau looking stiff as hell, like he need a gallon of oil to damn move. What the hell is this, man? They could have put me in there. Y'all know how I do? Y'all know how I get that pop out there? That's right, man. Ah. Yeah, put old stiff Esau up in there, man. He winning gold medals, pre shock laughing. He know how I do. Went about six of them. Right back in my day. All right, Captain Ryan, read all the lock. After this, that's my time. Okay, okay. Verse 8. My son, hear the instruction of thy father. That's it right there. The most I said, hear the instructions, okay, of the father. Simple thing. All right, it's a real simple thing, man. Instructions. Okay, the most I said, love one another. You got to offer one another. The instructions is in the book. Your diet is off. The instructions is in the book. You got to offer somebody at your job, a brother at your school. The instructions is in the book. You got to offer the sister. The instructions is in the book. This book tells you how to live, how to curb things, not to frown, smile at one another, man. Okay? It solves everything. Okay? But everything starts with you. The spirit manifests and starts with you. Be the example. All right? The hell with every damn thing else. You be the righteous example. Okay? You take low some time and be the example. Damn it. Be the peacemaker. And be like, you know what, brother? You right, man. Be the shalom. That's right, Elder Shalomar. Be the shalom. You be the bigger man and you play your part. Okay? Let the most high deal with the person that's not forgiving you. You play your part and you do the right thing. Alright? And let the most high deal with the person that's mad at you. Let the most high deal with that person at a lot of time because they're going to get it. Alright? As long as you're righteous and you do your part, don't worry about that person right there. You did your part. Alright? And loving one another. Read that again. Um, ain't this going to be it for me? I see uh, the uh, bam back there getting restless. Go ahead. My son, hear the instruction of thy father. Most I said, hear the instructions. Instructions is in the book. Okay? And you know when you don't follow instructions, you know when everything just go airy. You try putting together a war unit you without know, looking. Ah, I know everything, Shalom. I don't need this. I, I do this for a living. Next thing you know, you put something up on the whole damn thing and fell down. Because you know why? Because you didn't read this. stuff. There you go. Broke it. You didn't broke the damn 72 inch you didn't just spend all your money on. You know why? Because you didn't read the instructions. Your life is in chaos, okay? Because you ain't reading the instructions that the most I put out here for you, okay? The reason why you got contention with one another, okay, and hatred for one another, because you ain't following the instructions that the most I left for you right here. The reason why your diet is off, you got contention at home, okay, with your woman. Your woman got contention with you. You got contention with brothers and sisters because you ain't reading the instructions. You ain't reading the instructions. Okay? When you read the instructions, everything else is easy. Law of is easy if you believe in this book. Okay? But if you don't believe in this book, okay, that's what's making it hard for you right there. That's it, King? And forsake not the law of thy mother. Oh, there you go. The most I said, don't forsake the law of your mother. You little kids out there, you better listen to your parents. Okay? You better listen to your parents. Okay? And then this book right here. Okay? I didn't have that. Okay, well, my mom and dad, you know, was growing up, she, my father, he put the work, came back, smacked me upside the head, okay, and um, it went back to work again, there you go, came back, ate, went to work, smacked me upside the head, man, uh, went to work a lot, Brian, that's all my dad did, okay, I think when I was about 18, then he started sitting down, he started talking to me, and, and then, then them talks like, what the hell are you getting the hell up out of here? <laughs> Captain Brian, that was the longest talk I had, my dad, I, I kicked you not, I graduated high school in Brooklyn, man, I, I, make this up, man. I never seen my dad talk so damn much, man, on the day of graduation. All right? When you get the body? When you get the job? Uh, 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 when you get married? Uh, 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 what time are you leaving? Okay? How much money you got? Go open up a bank account. You ain't getting out of body. You go to school. You go to, you go to work. You go to school. I ain't never heard him talk so much in my life, Captain Ryan. Okay? And I said, damn, you waited 18 damn years, okay, to actually sit down and have a conversation with me. Have those hard conversations. I'm, up, I'm coming around third base right now. Have those hard conversations. Okay, with your kids that you don't want to have. Don't be afraid, okay, to talk to your kids about reality. Don't wait until they get 18, 19, 20 years old. Okay, now it's hard to discipline them now because you didn't instill that in them. You didn't lower their back and their neck while they was young. Okay, so now your kids telling you what the hell to do at the age of 18, 19 years old because you didn't instill the most size instructions in them. So it's hard. You know, I'm 19 years old. You ain't pulling out a belt for them. Okay? Now you ain't gonna, who you gonna use that on? Who you gonna use that one? You better get the hell up out of here. Now they're telling you what to do. Okay, because you as a parent, you didn't instill no righteous instruction in them from the beginning. Okay? So it's your fault. 
So y'all listen to your parents, listen to your, listen to your parents, man. Okay, your kids, you're blessed to be in this in these last days. Ain't nothing in this planet. Okay, both better than doing what these brothers is doing out here on the street and these sisters that's out here, man, following, okay, the words of the most. I ain't nothing on this block. I wouldn't trade this for nothing, man. Kill me, okay? I wouldn't trade this for nothing on this planet, man. All right? So with that, that's my time. From Yeshua! Servants of saints, excuse me, of saints. All right, uh, Captain Judah. Okay, go ahead, Judah. All right, Carl. I think Elder Barak put me behind Elder Carl. I need that same thing as you, Carl. All right, all right, all right. The servant is a saint. Yeah, Carl. <laughs> there you go. All right, all right Carl. All praise to the most high. So listen, I'm, I'm not going to be before you long, all right? I'm not your pastor. I'm going to tell the truth. I'm not going to be before you long. Let me get Psalms 33 and 1 real quick. All right. Psalms chapter 33, verse 1. Rejoice in the Most High, O ye righteous, for praise is comely for the upright. God, hey, Salaki, Salaki, Salaki. Nah, that was a wrong precept. It was a good one. Read it again. <laughs> Psalms 33, verse 1. Rejoice in the Most High, O ye righteous, for praise is comely for the upright. God, God, we one more time, huh? Rejoice in the Most High, O ye righteous, for praise is comely for the upright. And that's what we did when we first got here, God. The elder brought out some praises, some worship. You know what I'm saying? We're not used to that when we come into the truth. Especially, you know, when we get in uh, congregations, we, we throw the baby out with the bath water. Because when we was in the church, we did the praise and worship, so now that we come into the truth, we kind of throw that out, right? But the Bible says praise is coming, you come. All right, all praise to the most high. Let me get Psalms 133 and 1. That's what I want. Let me get that. Psalms 133, verse 1. Uh -huh. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. One more time. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Hey man, every time I get around Israelites, man, it's a good time, man. Just like the elder was talking about. I'll be going through things during the week, especially when we planning something. Say you want to throw an extra at you, right? He want to make sure your finances ain't straight. You want to make sure your car ain't acting right. You know what I'm saying? He might want to make sure your, your, your spouse ain't acting right. Whatever it may be. Your kids ain't acting right. Whatever it may be, right? And throw that monkey wrench in there and keep you from doing what the Lord put on your heart to do, right? But when you get around Israelites, man, you feel a little bit better. It's a beautiful thing to be around your brothers and sisters, right? It's a little piece of the kingdom, man. You, you, you taste the kingdom just a little bit, right? All right, let me get uh, the book of Romans chapter 12 and verse 1, right? Because we got to do this more often. There's a lot of people who tell you, yo, I can have a relationship with the Most High by myself at home, right? But the scriptures don't say that. All right? Let's bring it out. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Uh -huh. I beseech you, therefore, brother, be by the mercies of the Most High, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto the Most High, which is your reasonable service. Yo, you're supposed to present your body as a living sacrifice. You got to present yourself before the Most High. Right? That's the first thing you gotta do. You gotta present yourself before the Most High. How you gonna do that at the, at the crib? It's by yourself. You're not showing the good works, right? You're not letting your light shine before anybody. You just let the light shine in your living room, right? How you gonna do that without presenting yourself, right? We gotta present ourselves, man. Right? We go out on that corner for those who go out on the streets and teach. We present ourselves a living sacrifice, man. Letting our light shine before men. So they can see the good works, man. Right? That's what we're supposed to do. And that's what we're doing right now, quiet as it's kept, man. You got people watching on YouTube, seeing what they miss, and all these beautiful faces in front of me, right? Gathering together like the scriptures say. Right? Let me get Ecclesiastes 4 and 9. We're going to read uh, the 12. I'm going to stop here a little bit. Ecclesiastes chapter 4. Verse 9, to 
two are better, better than one. Two are better than one. So I can be an individual act brother? Read that again. Read that again for me. Two are better than one. Two are better than one, go ahead. Because they have a good reward for their labor. Come man. Hey, putting this together, man, is the reward for us. The brothers putting this together, right? Planning this for months. Hey, man, it's a good reward for the labor we put in, man. Get to see all of this come to pass, man. Right? Keep going. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. Uh -huh. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth. Mm -hmm. For he hath not another to help him up. So, hey, when you feel your spirit slipping a little bit, right? You feel like you're going off, I ain't studying like I'm supposed to. I ain't doing this, I ain't doing that like I'm supposed to. If you don't have no brother or no sister, a contact that's in this truth, who's going to lift you up, man? It says, whoa, that's destruction, man. You in trouble at that point. But once again, it, it baffles me. It goes against the mindset of, I can do this by myself. That don't even make no sense, right? It says, whoa, to them that falls and it's alone, man. Keep reading. Again, if two lie together, then they have heart, they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? Right. And if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him. And the, a threefold cord is not quickly broken. A threefold cord is not quickly broken, man. We stronger together, man. All right, you got the brothers outside holding security, right? If it was one man holding security and a few Edomites wanted to come up, we in trouble a little bit, right? But you ain't even getting inside with the brothers outside. Right? Right? Because we got multiple men outside to protect the people. Right? A three-fold cord is not easily broken. That's the same thing when you think about your brothers and sisters in this truth. Right? You think about the elders you have in this truth. You got people that you can call to get some counsel, man, to get you through whatever that thing is. See what I'm saying? All right, let's move forward. Let's go to, um, Salaki, Salaki. I got a couple of more, and I'm going to get out y'all away. Let me get Psalms 127. Read this quick. Psalms chapter 127, verse 1. Except the Most High build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Most High keep the city, the watchmen waken, but in vain. So, hey, that's where the humility comes in, right? Except the Lord build the house. They labor in vain. It's never going to work. Right? Except the Lord keep the city. The watchman waketh but in vain, man. We got to stay in these scriptures, man. We got to stay with some, an accountability partner. That's what they call it in, in the fitness world, right? An accountability partner. Somebody's going to be like, yo, you going off. I saw you in the drive through at McDonald's, but you supposed to be eating salad this week. You know what I'm saying? I saw you spending money at the mall, but we supposed to be uh, we supposed to be saving money. You know what I'm saying? Whatever that is, brother, I see you ain't really studying like that. When it's time to teach, you really don't got nothing to say what's going on. You know what I'm saying? And we do that all the time. One of the brothers, hey, my brothers that's coming up uh, after me, they'll tell you, they'll hit you up in a hot second, like, hey, yo, what's up? I, that brother right there, I don't know why he'll do it to you. Right? Let me get uh, Ephesians 4 and 8. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 8 it reads Wherefore he said when he ascended up on high he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men mm -hmm. Now that he ascended what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth He that descended is the same also that ascended up far, up far above all heavens that he might fill all things Right and he gave some apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. All right, so you know, hey, your house, I, and uh, through, through your house, gave us different gifts, man, right? Some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, some teachers, right? You're going to have different people who's going to uh, have different offices. It's going to tell you why in the next verse, read on. For the perfecting of the saints. It's for the perfecting of the saints, man. Right. So you got the Mashiach, the government of Israel, people that you can call 
the, the, the teachers that you all y'all are under can call them to make sure they doing what they doing right for the perfecting of the saints. Keep going. For the work of the ministry. Uh -huh. For the edifying of the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of the Most High. And this is what the whole thing that me and my brothers are talking about. We're talking about unity. Right? So we can come in, in together in unity. Yes, some of us have may have slightly different doctrines, but let me ask y'all something. We all got to keep the laws, right? Aye. We know we're the children of Israel, right? Aye. And we know this nation going to get destroyed, right? Aye. That's all I need to know. All right, keep going. Unto a perfect man, uh -huh. unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, uh -huh. that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. Right. This is what we got leadership for. This is what we got others for. We ain't tossed to and fro. Right? When we was in the church, one pastor could say this, and people in the crowd, yeah, like you know what you're talking about. We just chilling. Right? But now that we got eldership, we got leaders, we know this ain't right. This ain't according to the Bible. We're not tossed to and fro. Keep going. By the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie and went to the sea. Go ahead. But speak the truth in love, may grow up into him in all things which is ahead, even Christ. All right, keep going. From whom the whole body fit, fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplied, according to the effectual working in the measure, in the measure every part, make it increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Because we are body, man. You are know, right. You might be the shoulder, and I'll be the dog on kneecap. But guess what? We need each other, Connor. Kind of? All right, two more, and I'm out of here. First Corinthians one and ten. First Corinthians chapter one, verse seven. Verse ten. Say that again. Verse ten. Verse ten. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Hamashiach Yahushua, that ye all speak the same thing. And that there be no divisions among you. And that's the goal. That's why we, we have what we have right here. Right? That there'll be no divisions amongst us, man. Right? Hey, listen, man. We got we got a call against each other. We can go to the others. We can try to chop it up and figure it out. Right? But that's the whole goal. There's no, vi no division amongst us. Go ahead. But that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Oh, man, that's the goal. That's the goal. Last precept. It over. This is Hebrew. Give me Hebrews 13. We're going to read 1 through 3. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 1. Let brotherly love continue. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers. Hey, it don't matter what camp you in, what congregation you in, what church you in, I don't know what, it, what else they call it. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, man. They could be a brother with two subscribers on YouTube with friends on. That's your brother. You gotta acknowledge that man. Right? The same way you gonna acknowledge the man with a hundred thousand subscribers. Keep going. For thereby some have entertained angels on the way. God. Remember them that are in bonds, as bonds with them, and them that which suffer adversity, as being yourselves also in the body. Come on, man. We gotta remember everybody in Israel to sing. What they call it in the church, the sick and shut in, right? We had that sick and shut in list back in the day. We got to remember them, man. Once again, sometimes we throw out the baby with the bathroom. And we forget the certain things that was a part of what we was doing in the world that we, need, we needed to really bring with us. Remember the poor. Remember the sick. Remember those who can't defend themselves, man. That's what we got to do. That's part of unity. That's what part of being a family is. Come on. Right, I'm going to pass it on. Shalom. All right, all right, Shalom, Shalom. Next brother, the elder Bethathua. All right, all the way from Ghana. Give it up for Bethathua, all the way from Ghana. Check, check, check. 
So as we continue in terms of the elders and the captains before, um, the topic and the knowledge in terms of it's a couple of us teaching today, in terms of the reminiscing and everything that said from Ash, speak about debt. And debt become a crisis now among us as a nation of people. Keep in mind we as a nation in captivity. So we have to look out for our own in terms of our tradition. And in the Bible, in the Torah, we have a tradition where we bury our dead. So it's very important. We've been talking about it for some years now. And even still, you have brothers passing, you have nothing set up, etc. So that is very important in terms of death and in terms of um, precepting and I speak on it. So that's something that we have to look into. Elder Banya men speak about what? The kingdom and the end of this devil empire, which is very important too. Because the Bible said, this is not our rest, brothers and sisters. This is not our rest. And um, I think when we read Jeremiah 5, the most I said, no matter how he beat us, we become comfortable in this. We cannot be comfortable under sleepy Jew, under witch Kamala Harris. Yeah, and I see Israelite voting again like some did for Barack Obama. And we're still in the same position, sisters. So even that is very important. But Priest Yakanan started off with a prayer, as the Hamashai said, of a father which are in heaven. And, and we cannot pray enough as a nation of people in this time. Because what Priest Yakanan started off with, that cover everything where we are today as a nation of people. Because when you read the book of Daniel, Daniel said in prayer, what, three times a day, right? When you read the book of Psalms, David said pray seven times a day. When you're going to Thessalonians, Paul said pray without ceasing. So we even have to thank the most side to make it here today. Some of us journey from Wednesday, Tuesday, we have to thank the most side just to bring us here today as we speak. Can? Yeah. And Brother Shalomar speak about evil spirit. Very important, they speak about two things we are like. But evil spirit, and a brother, it's hard for a brother to understand that he has spirits of God. Do you understand? Me? So that's why Paul said we have to do what? Examine yourself. If this is right or wrong. And then, shall I touch on the most important topic about marriage? The duty of a husband, the duty of a wife. Keep in mind, Nobody teaches us how to be a good husband. We don't even know what a good husband is. Because Luke said our father, Abraham, was a good husband and a good father, right? But that's our same father tell Sarah, pack the bond woman and that child, my first son, and get them out of this house. A lot of you go to inside the family court today. So as we go along as a nation of people, brothers and sisters, we're learning as we go along. Can? Likewise, who's going to teach a woman to be a good wife? A single mother? So that's why Paul tells you again, you have to teach the woman to be a good wife and be obedient. Who's going to teach her? The man. Because you pleasing the man, huh? That's your duty, to please your husband. So as we said, there is a work in progress, as Brother Baum mentioned too. Give yourself a round of applause. Give yourself a round of applause. Because um, Mom mentioned that we are royalty. And sometimes in America, in terms of our conduct, or wherever we are, we forget that we are royal people. We have royal bloodline. We are kings and princesses on this earth. We are God. Right. So sometimes we forgot that. So um, give yourself a round of applause again just for being royal. <laughs> and who can forget the one? He said we don't have an easy way, can we? We don't. Because on the way coming here, a connection was supposed to be in Atlanta. So um, all of a sudden when we reach about three hours away, the pilot said, there was something happening in Atlanta, so they cannot land there. 
So um, if you travel with Delta, you'll know if you have T-Mobile phone, you have free internet at Delta. So it was mentioned on the plane that somebody bombed Atlanta Airport. So we never know what to take place if the pilot take a longer distance anywhere we never reach in New York. So when we reach New York, we get to understand that it was a um, when the plane tire explode and kill like three or four people at the Atlanta airport and injure many. Right? So even the journey here, you don't want to be in the sky 30,000 feet and somebody tell the airport is gone, do you? So when I hear that, I just went right back to sleep in terms of, I was in Israel a year ago. You understand? But well, that's not something we want to hear. So even that tell us where we went. And Zakwan so also mentioned, we as brothers, we be so emotional. We get mad for everything. So Zakwan have no reason to be mad if I take his seat, right? So I wonder if when he was teaching, he was defending himself more. Which one did he do? Eh? You have no reason to be mad if it's easy he was here and then he's not here anymore. Can you? Just saying. And then brother and the captain speak about, um, he start off with Psalms 133. Very important. This is what we need as a nation of people. But let me just go right into it. Brother Kalak, give me first Thessalonians 511, sir, please. And I only have six scriptures. Six. It's not six now, I just have six. Go ahead, Kalak. 5 11. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 11. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 11. Read on. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together. What the Bible said we must do as a nation of people? Comfort yourselves together. And that's why I said it. We trying to build a good church more than we building a nation from nothing. So as a nation, we must comfort ourselves together. And I think somebody mentioned about accountability. Accountability of everything to do with a nation and not a school or church. So as a nation, we must comfort ourselves to what? Together. Read on. And edify one another. And that's what we're doing. Get before 31 Acts. And that's what we're doing as a nation of people. We hear edifying each other. That's why all the men before me, the topics that they speak on, it's, it will help us as a nation of people. The Muslim helping their own. I see a documentary, Farrakhan of a big mega farm. Farrakhan of acres of farming. And then we now go to the supermarket and we buy the Chinese and the white man JMO food. And we say, look, it's JMO. The enemy was not supposed to feed us. But the Deuteronomy have to fulfill because we become reckless. We don't know what farming is. So now we have to serve our enemies in food. Now we talk about Flint, Michigan, water up there with all these tanks. Even here in South North Carolina, you see the tanks, right? Outside pink, nice and white, always inside looking. Then when they go to the so-called Middle East, the Arab, they dig well. When Abraham went to Beersheba in Israel, the first thing that Abraham did was what? He dig a well and it was contention. Abraham paid for the damn well because we have to drink water and he's not going to go to the enemy to get water to drink. Do you understand me? Right? Get me Acts 4, brother, 31. Mm -hmm. Acts chapter 4, verse 31. Read. And when they had prayed. When they had what? Prayed. Just like our, um, Brother Shalomar and um, Priest Kalat. They sing and they pray this morning. What happened, sir? The place was shaking. The place was what? Shaking. The place was what? Shaking. So that's why Barak could use a term in terms of if you're falling asleep, we'll give back Shalom on the mic. <laughs> because the Bible tells us in Egypt we were like the people. So if the laws of God be reading and you'll be sleeping, something is wrong. Right? Read on, sir. The place was shaking where they were assembled together. They were what? Assembled together. We were assembled together. So assembling, it's all about righteousness and togetherness. What's our plan as a nation? What's our desire as a nation? And in all these brothers' speech today, they mention what is affecting us as a nation of people. So when we go into the summit section, how can we fix these things? 
Get me Hebrews, sir, 10.25. And two more after that. Hebrews, mm -hmm. chapter 10, verse 25. Read on. Not forsaking the assembly. What the Bible said not to do? Not forsaking the assembly. Not to do what? Forsaking the assembly. Read on. Of ourselves together. So we cannot forsake together, this brothers. Because together we are strong. Remember what we learned at the eight, right? And, and Caesar, this is the name of the white man gave them. One of the eight named Ash, one named Caesar, one named Jacob, and the last one, the one named what? Daniel. Noah, Noah. Remember, the Savior, the last one is Noah. And one named Zeus. You understand me? So even Caesar said eight together is what? Strong. So as a nation together, we are brethren. What we trying to accomplish here, from the ten tribe leave many many moons ago, we have not we not we have not tried to accomplish that still. So it's very important we come over here and join with some of our fellow brothers from the northern kingdom. So the northern, yes, right? Can um, get me Ecclesiastic, sir. Sirach, eleven, verse twelve. Book of Sirach in the Apocrypha, 36, verse 11 to 13. Ecclesiastes, or the book of Sirach, 36? Yes, verse 11. Verse 11. Gather all the tribes of Jacob together. What the bonus I say we must do? Gather all the tribes of Jacob together. Read on. And inherit thou them. As from the beginning. Just like Moses did. Did Moses leave any man behind? Even when Moses fled Egypt, all that Moses stayed here before he crossed the Red Sea. In terms of Israel was not only in Goshen, but the majority of us was in Goshen. So Moses had to wait for all the tribe of Israel to come and meet us, then we crossed the sea. Right? Read on. Oh you, oh Lord. Have mercy upon the people. Oh Lord, and have mercy upon who? The people. Because as a nation, we need mercy from the most high. Read. That is called by thy name. Read on. And upon Israel, whom thou hast named thy firstborn. Remember who we are. That's how we become royal. Verse 13, sir. Oh, be merciful unto Jerusalem. Be merciful unto what? Unto Jerusalem. Read on. Thy holy city. That although we have a bunch of cowards over there today, we still have to remember, brother, that city is holiness. That's why when we pray, we turn where to pray? The east. Because that's our only city. Right? Read on to 14. The place of thy rest. The place of what? Thy rest. So America is not our rest. Or wherever we are on this earth. So just like we're going through it, the land is going through it. Look at, look at what's taking place, brothers. You see, Iran sending over 300 drones lighting up Israel. His bullet, the Houthis, everybody turn up on Israel. And the only thing you can do when that happens, you go to the airport, the airport is full. White people leave it. You love the land so much, fight for it! You just want the British and the American to put you there and give you money and everything. And as soon as a rocket fire, oh, the airport shut down, everybody out. They say it's a big insurgent of Jewish people in Paraguay, in Colombia, in Argentina. They're running from the land. So now, this is our rest, brothers. And oh, yeah. And the most I'm cleaning it up for us. Right? Verse 14, Kalak. Verse 14. Fill Zion with that unspeakable oral. And world. that's what you see happening. Even that you see over there now. They speak on the news that... Israel don't even know. Get me to it, sir, please. 13 verse 12. They said it on the news. Israel don't even know when Iran going to retaliate. So Matthew is always staying in a bunker in Tel Aviv. He's staying in a bunker. And they're supposed to be the people of God. And traveling through tunnels like rats. Right? So get me the book of Tobit. 13 verse 12, sir, please. And one more after that. 
Tobit 13 verse 12. Tobit chapter 13 verse 12. Read on. It reads. Cursed are all they which hate thee. What the Bible said? Cursed are all they which hate thee. So I know some of you brothers and sisters, you have compassion for the white man. Stop it. Stop it. Just, just stop it. And who would it say that? Um, Kamala Harris, stop. And Sean came back and said, I'm going to come. So I'm telling you, no, just stop it. Because the Bible said, whatever seed a man sow, he will reap. And the white man, the seed that the white man sow on this earth is death, destruction. Can the Bible tell you, 60 minutes, America will be destroyed. Read that from the top again for me, sir. Verse 12. Cursed are all they which hate thee. Read. And blessed shall all be which love thee forever. For what? Forever. Read verse 13. Rejoice and be glad for the children of the just. Rejoice and be glad for who? The children of the just. And that's only the first bond that Sirach tell you about. Read on. For they shall be gathered together and shall bless the most high. And, that's, and this is the beginning of it, brothers and sisters. In Egypt, it was a beginning from Moses went there, can? And when Moses went there, how much of them was it? Aaron and Joshua? That was it. And now we become a great nation on the face of the earth. Get me Psalms 129 verse 5. I close up with that. Psalms 129 verse 5. Yes, 129 verse 5. The book of Psalms. Psalms 129 verse 5. Read on. Let them all be confounded. What the Bible said they should do? Let them all be confounded. Let them all be what? Confounded. From Russia to China to Iran to all of them. When you read Psalms 83, all the enemies of the Most High that mentioned there, let them all be, be what? Confounded. confounded. Why? Read on. And turn back that hate Zion. That hate who? Zion. Remember. People is Zion and the land is Zion. Keep that in mind. So that the, all the enemies that hate us, let them turn back and be confounded. But the key part in this is the togetherness of the twelve tribe of the children of our fathers. We have to we have to stick together, brothers. And as what Zephon is stressing, we get mad so easily. I hear on um, the cap, Judah said doctrine. What doctrine? What is that true? Because the Bible is here. Everything else is the opinion of man. Because when I came in this truth, Elder Tazabak always said, whatever you read in this Bible is the word of God. But when you go and you start to break them, no, that's when you go off. So the word of God is here. We know we are as a nation, can't? The white man is the devil the Bible speaks of. Yahweh Shah is kings of kings. Can? Yeah. So what, what, what else should separate us? What? 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 Give us the excuse. Can it have to be excuse? Now we have brothers saying what? Israel is in South Africa. Show me one biblical artifacts that come from South Africa. Be reading a Bible with 66 book along with the Apocrypha. Where's, where are all these artifacts? Where's all these um, scrolls came from? Where did they find them? Tell me, you tell me. For the brothers that travel to Jordan, if you've been to Jordan and you go to the library in Amman, you will see the so-called Moabite rock, won't you? Amman is the capital of Jordan. Do you understand what I'm saying? And they have the rock with Yahweh on it. But now everybody, I'm leaving, I want to be different. It's, it's Yahuwah. It, it's Moses and Christ blessed. Because when you leave something, you have to be different. Do you understand? Me? So now, when it's John 3. We have to lift up like Yahweh Shai in the wilderness like Moses lifted up the serpent. And the greatest man on this earth, nobody knows his name. The Romans murder somebody put on the cross and nobody knows his name. So when one leave, the togetherness, keep in mind, last speech, yes, I know, last speech. When the night of the Passover, come, 
And when Solomon talked about evil spirit, Rapnik mentioned later, earlier, the disciples have spiritual power. Disciples have spiritual power. Right? So now, when Yahweh was there in the Passover, the last night, who would he live? One never wanted to get in this, right? So one left, and when that one left, what happened to him? Because how will I tell us when one go by himself, he have seven more demons in him. So when Judas came back, he came back with somebody else. What's it? Keep in mind, brothers. When they all leave, they all change. I was telling brothers the history. And I said, I know Kahan before LOZ. We still keep that brotherhood. Nothing can separate us from the love of Yahweh or Yahweh Shai. When we meet and talk, we don't even talk about religion or denomination. Because that's what Israel become. When we have to identify that we are what? A nation in captivity. I hear people say, oh, this is Shalom Street here. Come on for Shalom Street. Oh, this is Zakwan Street right here. When in Israel we have a damn street named the Rockefeller. And brothers, it's not mad about that. In Israel, the, the, the museum there is the Rockefeller Museum. Three museums. The Bilderberg Museum, the Rockefeller Museum, and that Prime Minister that it was in England, he have a museum there. And brothers, don't mad about that. They have 12 gates to fake Jerusalem. One of the gates is Herod Gate. So I'm looking, where's Ephraim Gate? I don't see Ephraim Gate, I see Jaffa Gate. We see all gates, but no gates with Judah, Benjamin, or Levi. And brothers is angry with us. So that's why Zachman said, direct your anger somewhere else, brother. So Zachman, be mad at the white man. Not who take it, sir. <laughs> take it, sir. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. All right, Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. So we just remember we're on intermission after two more brothers, Eliel and myself. Okay, Cut? So let's hold on. We're going to have refreshments and everything. We're going to remember the class. When the class is about, going to go on also. Okay, Eliel. He's going to bring us uh, concerning unity out of the apocrypha. That's correct. Hi, right, y'all. Shalom, shalom. Brother Eliel. Um, well, we're going to get right into it, right? Let's not waste no time. So, uh, Sirach chapter 25, verse 1. We're going to go ahead and get into that uh, from your apocrypha, right? Uh, unity is something that's a big thing for us, right? We obviously here at the 21st annual Mashara Yasharala Summit, right? So, uh, if I may, I'd like to, you know, give double honors to the elders on stage and the crowd for putting this thing together all the time. And also to yourselves for showing up, right? Realizing y'all is real, realizing we have to gather together as a people like it tells us to do in Zephaniah 2 and 1, right? And that's kind of the angle I'm going to get at today. So, if you can get that, brother, uh, Sirach chapter 25, verse 1. The book of Sirach, chapter 25 and verse 1. In three things I was beautified and stood up beautiful, both before God and men. The unity of brethren, the love of neighbors, a man and a wife that agreed together. Yeah, come. And that's what we see up here, right? Hopefully everybody's man and wife is up here agreeing together because y'all here, right? Everybody's kids is doing their thing, you know what I'm saying? Uh, serving the most high in righteousness, right? And everybody's gathered together. So that's the things we like to see. That's what we want to continue to see throughout Israel, right? We want you guys to keep moving in that spirit and even want it to grow. Don't make the Mashra Yasharala Summit the only time y'all gather together to have your unity camps and have your holy convocations and stuff. You know what I'm saying? This needs to be something that we do every time throughout the year. If you can get with brothers and sisters besides your regular camp for new moons, we need to be doing that. You know what I'm saying? If y'all want to just do some, like me and uh, Elder Ben was talking earlier, I'm trying to get the temper now so we can go have a little unity camp with them and stuff like that, right? And get some other camps to go, like on the fly. So that's the type of stuff we need to be doing more and more as a nation, not just having, you know, a couple times out of the year that we all get together. This needs to be something that, you know, the heathen can see us all the time constantly gathering together just to put that fear in their heart, you know what I'm saying? To show them what's going to be coming. 
So uh, let's get uh, Philippians 2 and 2 as well, right? Then we're going to jump right back to the Apocrypha. Just to land me back off of that real quick. Philippians 2 and 2. The book of Philippians. The book of Philippians, chapter 2 and verse 12. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvations with fear and trembling. So that's what we have to do, right? And you guys being here is helping you work out your own salvation, right? Give me verse 2. Because this is the point, right? Us gathering together is a certain way we're supposed to be uh, dealing with each other, like the other one you spoke about earlier, right? It's a certain way we're supposed to be talking to each other, a certain way we're supposed to just deal as a nation, right? And a lot of our people in the world, like Judah said, we thought of, you know, through slavery and everything, that whole uh, united front that brothers used to have has gone now. It's very rare that unless you're in the truth, you can see a brother, you walk down the street, you know, hey, what's up, bro? And he actually say it back. I don't know how many times we'll be at camp in Atlanta, you know what I'm saying, and brothers don't even say what's up to us, right? I don't know. So that's the thing, right? I don't like seeing that, and I like that, you know, us as Israelites are more of a unified people. That's what I want to be able to show the folks out in the world as well. That's a light that we need to be able to transmit more and more. Like, if you understand what I'm saying. Uh, let's get that verse 2, please. I verse 2. Fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. That's right. So we have to be like-minded, right? Being of one accord, one mind, right? Um, we know all of our doctrines aren't like, like exactly the same, but the one accord and one mind that we need to be of is keeping the law, statutes, and commandments, keeping the faith in Christ, right? And basically doing everything we need to do to endure to the end and stay in his truth, right? Like the other one you said, it's very difficult once you leave to come into his name. Right, we would like to come back. So once we in it, we need to find ways to stay in it, right? And like uh, Judah was saying earlier, it's much easier to stay in this thing when you got people around you to help you, you know, in this walk, help you get through that walk. When you're going through stuff, you got folks you can call, right? When you got uh, like like events you need done or whatever, like this, we can put things together real quick, right? You got brothers you can lean on and stuff. So that's the type of spirit more of our people need to move in, and we're the only people on the planet that's going to be able to give them that spirit and show them how it's supposed to work, because we lost that spirit uh, captivity, right? So we need to be able to give that back to our people. You know, the only way to do that is to get it about this Bible and continue to transmit that light that we've been able to get, right? So with that, let me get one more. Uh, Sirach chapter 20, uh, 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 Slaki. let's get to 2 Ezra 2 and 27, right? The reason I want to bring this out is because... Um, it's going to give you a little bit of a hint as to what can happen if we actually unify the way that the Most High intends for us to, right? Uh, we all know how the heathen are looking to World War III. They all scared of it, right? They're trying to make you vote on the next president, whether it's going to be the fake black lady or Donald the Duck Trump, right? Um, so, yeah, the fake black lady, you know? So, uh, whether it's going to be one of them, they're trying to make our people and the other people vote for one that's going to get them on the side of being safe through World War III, right? But we know the Bible tells us the only people that are going to be safe in that is us. And it's us as a unified front, right? So let's get that and explain what I mean. The book of 2 Ezra, chapter 2, and verse 27. Be ye be not worried, for when the day of trouble and heaviness cometh, others shall weep and be sorrowful. See that? So when the day of heaviness comes, other people are going to weep. But how does that happen, right? If you're amongst those other people, you're going to be one of the ones with, like, are weeping too, right? So at some point, we have to find a way to gather together and be in the same spot, right? Be able to get around the same spot, be able to get around other righteous people so that, you know, that death angel pass over us again, right? That's the whole thing we want to happen. And in that instance, we're in a situation where in this, you know, captivity, we actually end up um, in a place where... It's very difficult for our people that's within that space, right, to be touched. And the Bible actually tells us we're going to be saved from him, right? It's going to explain to people, because Judah was talking about us having to save the widows, right, the children, the fatherless children, and everything like that. Those are all people we have to eventually accept within our gates, show them the law to be able to save those people from hell, too. Go ahead and read on the 29, Audible. But thou shalt be merry and have abundance. The heathen shall envy thee. But they shall 
So I can, but they shall be able to do nothing against thee. You see that? So they're going to be pissed off, just to say it frank, right? They're going to be going through everything that they told you you was going to go through through that COVID-19 debacle they had, right? Where you are rushing to the stores, you're grabbing nothing but water and tissue paper, like that's the only thing that's going to save you, huh? Y'all forgot to get food, <laughs> right? So it's like, that's the type of stuff that people in the world are going to be doing. They're going to be grabbing all the wrong stuff, and we're going to have the spirit on us to get everything we need, right, in advance. And we're going to be straight. Why are they scrambling and having to kill each other, you know, to get the little bit of the resources that's left? We already have everything set up. That's the spirit we need to be in, and we need to be preparing for that because the time is coming close. Like the Ottoman said, right? This might be our last summer, <laughs> right? Could be our last Passover the next one. So we got to be ready and be prepared for that. So that's what I implore everybody to do. Keep unifying. Keep coming together. Keep these holy convocations coming. And keep doing these summers, man. Don't stop, right? Until you have a shot crack the sky. Yeah. All right, shalom, shalom, shalom. All crazy how about shalom, 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 I just want to say shema, yashama, yahawa, yahawa, alahayanawa, yahawa, akha. The most high, hero Israel, the most high is one. That's very, very important. Cut. In these last days, we're going to recognize the Most High Yahweh Shai is one, and his wife is Israel. All one. Cunt. All one, remember? All one bread. All one. we got to understand it's very important. All this separation in different camps and so on and so that's all madness. Like what Dr. says, all madness out here. So we got to learn how to really now come together and set aside our differences. Remember, the problem was Israel. The problem is not the other nations. Because they are allotted to do what they do with their idol gods. Cut. They are allotted to do what they do. Because they are Gentile nations. Cut. We're Gentile being nation. So we have to understand that. But we are the most size chosen. We are as witnesses. We're as battle acts and weapons of war. We're supposed to keep the commandments and follow them. And sacrifice our lives to follow them. Cut. And not give up, endure to the end, and follow the commandments. But we, we didn't do that. We fell into the hands of the nations and followed the idol gods. And so like a wife who commits adultery, which is an abomination, the most of us said, well, my wife committed adultery, I'm going to divorce her. And I'm going to cast her out of my sight. And the most of us said, what are you going to do? going to cast Israel out of the land in fury and in anger. And that's what he did, God. And that's, that's where we are. We're dispersed all over the earth. So like now you got Brother Matatu in Ghana now. You know who's in Ghana? Israelites. Bantu tribe. Right, Matatu? Uh, the Ashanti tribe. Right? The God tribe. All Israelites. Okay, Khan? On the side here, you see Judah, Benjamin, Levi. You may see what part of Africa and what tribe they came from. All Israelites. We're all over the earth. We've had brothers that have been all over this earth and, and dealt with Israelites, Hebrew Israelites, in, in uh, low communities, ghetto communities in these areas. In, in, not only in uh, uh, Africa, but in Europe also. In Saudi Arabia, in Persia, in the Persian areas, okay, in Asia, all over the world, okay? So now it's our time for us to come together. And so, and bring our nation forward, come. Bring our nation forward and our government forward in Yahawashah. But Yahawashah ain't going to do it without the nation of Israel. That's why he said, those that would not have me to wait over them, do what? Slay them. Bring them before me and slay them. That means for Israel too. <laughs> right, God? You're going to be put to death. If you ain't the way, you're going to be put to death. If you're not about the uh, 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 charity, hospitality, courtesy, loving thy brother, nurturing thy brother, caring, love, all those things, for the brotherhood of the nation of Israel, Yahweh Shai is going to destroy you. Cut. we got to be for those things. All this so separatism and, and uh, uh, dividing, dividing yourself in Israel and, and making a disclaimer that if you're not part of my camp, I want to get, you know, I can't salute you, then Yahweh Shai will not salute you. Okay? That's why now we stand, the martial arts shall stand for, for what? All the camps, all, all the camps, even, look, we even go to Israel and to Mona, and we stand with them brothers, okay? 
And we know that they're not in your house shot, but we stand with those brothers. Why? Because they're brotherly. They received us. Okay? And then later on, your house shot would be revealed to them. Come. Look for all Israel, brother. And we let the most side do the do the what? Do the destroying. Okay? And casting out. We let the most side do. Our job is to gather the nation of Israel. Okay? In love and in hope and faith and charity. That's our job. So, with that, I'm gonna bring out a few scriptures and then we're gonna go into uh, uh, the intermission, con. And we have, remember, the class will be up here. We have the midwife class first. The sister's gonna teach the midwife class first. Then after that class, the ones who are the, the burial class, the marriage class, the history class, you stay in there because then they're gonna switch out. The sister will finish her class and the next brother will come up and teach. Okay, cut? So don't, if you want those classes, don't go nowhere, stay in the class, cut? Okay, and they're gonna teach for a good 30, maybe 40 minutes each or so. Okay, cut? Very important, Let the Hebrew class, Ben, you ready? <laughs> this is after Ben. Ben, ben, ben gonna teach the Hebrew class. Okay, so all these classes are very important as the brother was speaking about it. I spoke about the burial, we gotta get ourselves prepared. Because as a nation, to be able to bury our own people, we don't need the white man to bury us. Come. He's going to embalm you and then have you in a morgue for seven days. That's out of order with the most high. Come. Okay. So we teach you how to, we teach our people how to bury here at the Marshall Royal Yashar. Circumcision is wrong. Then you are 10 years old, you decide now to go get circumcised. That's, that's out of order. Come. Right? Okay, so we're going to teach those guys that marriage, your brother's brought up about marriage. All that's important, huh? okay? And brother's going to bring that about the history class, about history. Okay, Con? And we got to know our own language, too. Okay? A lot of us, how are you going to you send your nation of Israel but don't know nothing about Hebrew? Don't know nothing about your language and your nationality go together, fundamentally. Con? It's fundamental. You need that. Your language is very important. It's synonymous with your nationality, cunt. So when you hear brothers say you don't need Hebrew, that's a damn lie. Hebrew is your language, bro. Okay? I'm, I'm going to salute you. Yahweh bar shalom, Yahweh shai, brakatha. That's how I'm going to salute you. I'm not going to say Mosai and Christ bless. I'm not going to say that, cunt. So it's very important. So now with that, so we can make it quick. The book of Revelation, okay, I'm going over, I'm supposed to go over a few scriptures out of the book of Revelation, but I'm going to cut it short. I'm going to just go to, bam, Jeremiah 30 and 7. But I'm going to read this, of course, we're going to have this book that I, most I, I gave me the spirit to write called uh, Revelation Revealed, and when we set the tables and the vendors, we're going to be selling it. But I'm going to read the back of it, and it says this. Listen up closely, it says the book of the revelations handed down to us by and through the spirit of a Mashiach Yahushai is the last book of the scripture, okay? And sums up all previous prophecy now revealed to us in these last days of this current society. This book is revealed to those of us, listen now, those of us in this generation, this generation, come. It is revealed to us who would take part in the events that would occur from the prophecies contained in the book of Revelation. Because you're going to take part in these prophecies, okay? It's being revealed to us now what's happening in the book of Revelation. Slowly but surely, the tribulation period is coming. Jacob's trouble is coming. Jacob's trouble is synonymous with the tribulation period. A seven year long period, the last seven years of the 70 weeks. Hasn't happened yet. Why? Because the, when this Jacob's trouble and the tribulation period starts, that's when the Most High is dealing with us in Israel. Cut. Okay. So the last two thousand years or so, the Most High hasn't been dealing with us in Israel. Cut. We've been dispersed all over the earth. So a remnant of us is going to be in Israel when Jacob's trouble starts. That's when the, the, the beginning of the last seven years of the 70 weeks you read about in Daniel 9th chapter 24 verse to the 27th verse. Cut? Okay, then it will start. And that's why Revelation is a book of what? Sevens. Seven represents what? Completion. 
seven plagues, seven trumpets, seven last vials, seven seals, and, the, and, and seven churches, gone, right, book of sevens, gone. So the last week of the 70 weeks is what? Seven years long, which is a week, which represents a week long, which is seven days, but it was 70 times seven years, seven years long, gone. So the most I got it. And when we when that remnant's in Israel, okay, and you got a remnant over there now, right? They've been over there 50 years. How about that? God? And we visit them every time we go to uh, Israel, the, uh, Demona. And some of us are going to be there too. And the most I is going to deal with us. Then the tribulation period is going to start. Okay, come. So it says, it says, uh, Okay, this book is revealed to those of us in this generation who would take part in the events that would occur from the prophecies contained in the book of Revelations. These prophetic events yet to take place. Okay, only the first three chapters of Revelation took place. But from the fourth verse, or the fourth chapter, excuse me, fourth chapter to the 22nd chapter hasn't taken place yet. Cut. Hasn't taken place, okay? And it says this, uh, are written to be understood by the generation that was near to the fulfillment of the prophecies predicted to and immediately precede the coming of Hamashiach Yahushai and the salvation of the nation of Israel. Cut? Okay? So you are the generation that's here to witness when the book of Revelation is revealed, these the brothers and sisters coming up now in the truth. Con, can we let that like family bring it out? Ben say, I feel it in my spirit. It ain't gonna be ten years long. It's gonna be, you know, we're not gonna give a date on it, of course. But we in the end here. They got a thing called Project 2025. Don't they? Do you know in that project how many people they got alive to be killed? I got it in my phone. It's 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 over 300 million people in America. America plans already having 99 million people left. Yeah. That, that's, that's not just a, a Republican thing. That's the ruling elite. That's the ruling elite's plan. And read it. I got the document. They have it in Ireland. All the names of people are down to a certain number. In, in, in Europe, in Russia, everywhere, down to a certain number. Okay, everywhere, Britain, everywhere, down to a certain number, millions. That's part of their project 2025. When's 2025? A few months from now? <laughs> right? Get prepared. That's why the most I said for the nations, prepare for war. Right? Take your, take, take your, uh, your, your, your weapons, take your uh, farming weapons and beat them down to um, uh, weapons of war. And we have to do the same thing. And we're not being prepared. We out here on TikTok shaking our asses. The men are running around with their pants hanging down in their asses. They say, yeah, they're shaking it wearing high heels and all that. They got LeBron wearing wigs and Snoop Dogg wearing dresses and these men. What the hell are the rap, the effeminate rap stars? It's all about eff eff effeminate now. What the hell is going on? They want to demoralize Atlanta is like Sodom and Gomorrah. Don't go to Atlanta. And then you don't know who you marry. You think you married a nice woman that turns out a couple years later it's, it's a man that was a transvestite. You say, what the hell happened? Oh, okay, a couple months? I don't know. A couple months? For some it's a couple years. For some find it a couple years. One woman she was a transvestite, like married a man, and what happened? The man, the husband wanted a baby. She knew she couldn't have a baby because she was really a man. He never knew it. She killed the woman that was pregnant down the block and cut the baby out and brought the baby home. And so he thought the baby was his. Till there was a done and in, in, uh, intense investigation on what happened. <laughs> Unbelievable, man. So be careful. It's Sodom and Gomorrah out here. You know, look, they, they, they want to they wanna make this woman a president, right? So it's, you at the elite now. You at the height, the apex of wickedness. It's all over the place. 
It's everywhere. You're at the apex of it. Okay, so it's about to fall. But it's gonna, it's, we're going to go through a tribulation period. And who's going to be affected? You. Because you're the chosen people of the Most High. And Satan can't get to you, how is I? The Antichrist, which is the first, uh, Revelation 6 and 1, Antichrist is what? The first seal. The coming of the Antichrist. He's the first seal. And in that first seal, it says what? He's coming. And he's coming to conquer and conquer him. He will kill by any means necessary. Don't care about black folk. They only use you. Kamala Harris made over how many millions of dollars in one night? All black women. And then you know, when we talk about donate to the truth, you can't do that. But you can give, a, a, like the brother said, a fake black woman who she, uh, they call her father an Asian Caucasian, or uh, mother Asian Caucasian, whatever that is. What the hell is she? A demon from hell. So, uh, we heard on some of you Israelites, you, you vote, you vote. You know your vote don't count. You know, why'd you vote for Barack Obama? We heard brothers did that. And some of you want to vote for Kamala Harris because you think you got a stake in America. Let it go. Let America fall. I'm so glad. I hope Project 2025 do come. And I hope the death and destruction at the Howard Shine. Read this one. Luke 19.27 or, or Matthew 10.34. Right? What if I come with peace, the scripture said. I tell you, no! It shall be coming with a sword. Yahweh Shai going to send his angels to come with a sword. And in the Apocalypse tells you, he come with four kinds of swords. Four kinds. Right? All different kinds of ways. It's going to be a tornado, it's going to be a hurricane, it's going to be an earthquake, and you know they're going to be, it's going to be multiplied now. Those type of deals are going to be multiplied. So we got to come to what all we have in Yahweh Shai. Gun. We don't have nothing else. Okay, you don't have no black leaders no more. They're gone. Reverend Al Sharpton looks like that damn tree out there. Look like a damn telephone, but skinny as hell. I'm saying, what happened to Reverend Al? I'm saying, it looks like one of these uh, <laughs> uh, things with the uh, phones here. Skinny as hell. There's no black leaders. Uh, Reverend Jesse Jackson got Parkinson's. Pretty much gone. He's gone. See, the Most High can get you back, boy. Don't play with the Most High. Don't make mockery of the Most High's word. There's not going to be a rainbow coalition. Sharpton is wrong. He's withering away. Okay? All no black leaders no more. They're gone. All you have is Hamashiach Yahweh. That's why the Most High is doing it this way. He's showing your leaders are gone. No more black Panthers. No more black nationalist groups. The NAAC, no, no, they are pretty much, they don't do nothing no more. What is Corey? Where, where have Corey done lately? Congress of Racial Corps, what have they done? What the Urban League have done lately? Not a damn thing. See, so we got to stop that. Matthew 10, 34. Matthew chapter 10, verse 34. Think not that I am come to send peace. I'm not coming for peace, huh? On earth. I come not to send peace, but a sword. A sword, see? A sword could be anything, right? A sword could be a hurricane, a sword could be a tornado, a sword could be an earthquake, a sword could be war. A sword could be when Israel dropped bombs on the hospital in Israel, uh, Palestine, and all the babies got killed. That's the most high sword. A sword could be Sonia Massey in her house, calling the police and the police executed her in her house. Oh, poor Sonia Massey, well, the most I didn't think so. George Floyd, to me, a rise, not even the most I didn't think so. He said, oh, nation of Israel, your son and your daughter shall be killed in this place. But why? Why is it happening to us? Why are these things happening? Because the most I said, Israel, you are, you are, run, you are, you are fat. You have run fat. Judgment wax fat. Okay? Mother said, uh, give up your folly ground. Give it up. Because you're wicked. That's why we know it. We know it's the most high. Out there in the world, they don't know. But we know what the hell we follow doing. It. So it's and they're doing it execution style now. And they hold themselves what? 
They don't even think they're guilty. Right? The guy who shot Sergeant Mapsy is trying to get off. He gonna get off after a while. He ain't gonna serve that much time. They don't care about you. So we gotta return back to the most high. The most high can cut it off and stop them from killing you in a minute. It took them an eye, right? But he's trying to wake us up. So you, like the brother said about prayer, you pray for yourself, you pray for your family, you pray for the martial arts Allah, you pray for the brotherhood, you pray to come together, you pray for the commandments of the Most High, you pray for the nation of Israel to come together, that's what you pray for. You ain't got to pray for the destruction of Esau, because that's, that's already written, that's already going to happen. I don't even say nothing about Esau in my prayers, because I already know how I already got that covered. They finished. America, hot dogs and apple pie is gone. It's over. It's gone. Okay? So we got to understand it. So, uh, Jer Jeremiah 30 and 7, huh? Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 7. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. How about that? None is going to be like these last days. Nothing. When this tribulation period come. In the book of Revelation, nothing is like it. Okay? But he shall be saved out of it. So Jacob shall be saved out of it. Now read from the beginning again one more time. Go ahead. At last, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. Jacob's trouble. What does that mean? Israel's trouble. It says you're going to be tried as gold is tried in the fire. You know how gold is tried? You got to melt it back down. And if it doesn't come back as pure gold, you know there's alloys in it and all kinds of crap. It's not pure. So are you pure? Become pure. That's what Yahweh Shai is looking for. He's looking for the pure in you, the purity in you. Okay? Not for the defiled in you, but the purity in you. Come? That's what he's looking for. He knows we're all defiled, but through Yahweh Shai, we're what? We're all cleansed. Come? So become pure. All right? Jacob's trouble is synonymous with the seven-year tribulation period. When the tribulation period starts, that first seal is broken in Revelation 6, Jacob's trouble. Because you know the Antichrist is coming. And they already got him pegged. Whoever it is, they already got him pegged. He's being well-groomed and trained by the elite to follow the, the elite's plans. Come. And this thing about the Third World's War, the Third World's War is not in the Bible. Gun and the Bible. The three world wars, the first world war, second world war, and the third world war is not in the Bible. The, the Bible just says wars and rumors of wars. Those three wars were designed by the elite. Gun and the Most High allowed them to have the first world war. Allowed them to have the second world war. So are they going to have the third world's war? Gun. Right. But they expect the third world's war that they'll come out of it. Alive, but more likely they will. Cut. The third world's war is about what? The Islamic State and Israelis fighting. Okay, they're going to war. And they're going to draw the Arab states into it, America into it, Britain into it. A third world, a three, a world war is about 22 nations involved in a war. Cut. That's what they consider a world war. But that's not in the Bible. That's their thing. So they remember, we're going by what the Most High is teaching us. Okay? So the tribulation period and the Jacob's trouble is going to be synonymous. Okay? They're going to be at, it's going to be at the same time. Come, go ahead, huh? But he shall be saved out of it. But say, Jacob shall be saved out of it. The remnant of us, the most I want to say, God, there's going to be deliverance. We know there's a remnant going to come out of America. There's no remnant going to come out of uh, South America, Central America, the Caribbean, and so forth, and take it to the wilderness, God. And then, the, then Yahweh Shai is going to deal with us in the wilderness. And then the ones of us that are like mad at Yahweh Shai for de delivering you, like you came out of ancient Egypt. Then he's going to try you and see if you're ready for the new covenant and the law, statutes, and commandments. Con, go ahead, up. For it shall come to pass in that day, said the Most High of hosts, that I will break his yoke from off thy neck. Said he's going to break, he's going to break 
the yoke, the wheel, the uh, uh, visa off our neck cut, it's going to be broken in that day. But remember, remember the, the parable of the marriage feast. You had a brother that came in with the wrong garment on. What do you? How should I say? Cast him out. Okay, it's going to be weeping and gnashing of teeth. You can't come to a wedding with the wrong garment on. Next thing you know, I've mentioned about Pan Africanism. That ain't going. You can't come in there with that. You can't come in there with Islam to your house You can't come in there as a Democrat or Republican to your house Wrong wedding garment, sorry. You out. You out. Okay. Also, brothers here and, and, and know the truth. You still can't come on with a wrong wedding garment. You got the right frame of mind. See? If you come with a, a, a frame of mind, you want to abuse your brother. Okay? Uh, 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 take advantage of your brother. Okay? Use your brothers. And so on and so forth. That's the wrong wedding garment. You out. Doesn't, doesn't matter how long you know you were issued like that. You out. See, so have the right wedding garment on. Spiritually, go ahead, up. And will burst thy bonds, and strangers shall no more serve themselves of him. See? So if the stranger is still serving themselves of you, are they still in your community? Are the Koreans, the Arabs, the Chinese, the Japanese, all these nations still in your community serving themselves? Didn't Kamala Harris serve herself? <laughs> Of our people in one night, she had almost millions of dollars. Usually, Barack Obama had a billion dollar campaign, no campaign like that in history. And all he did was ask for what a dollar here, two dollars here, three dollars here. That's all he did through uh, the internet and the cash app. No, that's all he did. Man, a billion dollars, and he got it from what our people. And you idolize this man, didn't do a damn thing for black folk, did he? Nothing. See, so that's the way it is. So we got to understand it's time for us to wake up. Come. So now it is time for, right, the nation, Marshall and Yashua. And we're going all the way, brothers. I pray to most High make this the government of Israel. That's what I pray for. Because what else is left? You tell me. What else is left? It's high time for us to get our government. See, they... They don't care about you teaching that they're the devil. The white man don't care. He knows he's the devil. The Bible's with, right? They don't care about all that stuff. See? What, what are they afraid of? Government of Israel. The true government. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that follow it. That's what they're afraid of. Because that's the end of their world. Cut? Was that it up? But they shall serve the most high their power. What are we going to serve? The most high. Who are we going to serve? The most high. Who are we going to serve? The most high. Now, how about Shabbat Shalom? Who are we going to serve? Okay. Okay. So, with that, we're going to go into an intermission. Where's Judah at? There he goes. And that's what Judah I want to see. Huh? Here he is. Here's the one who's hosting the summit. That's a nice garment. <laughs> that's, a, that's a nice garment. I, I like that garment. So I just want to make sure uh, so we have uh, refreshments and everything for the brothers and sisters. So, okay, we got some small stuff back there, but this is intermission, okay? So we got some refreshments back there. You go to the bathroom and everything. Remember the class, the sister, Shara, is going to teach the midwife class first. So all you sisters that want to know about midwife, she got it. She can tell you. She can teach you. And you need to learn it. Okay? We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna start it. We're going to end it. Yeah, 347. Can we end it? So, so we're going to have the sisters eat first. All right. We got 15 pieces all the way. I don't know if they're here yet. They might be here already. They already here? All right, cool. So we got all the food back there for lunch. We got a nice dinner for y'all later, so enjoy that. Sisters, eat first, then go upstairs. Make sure y'all leave enough for the brothers and some security outside. Come, all right. Wow. Four. 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 Okay.
So we say, they say about 4.15, if Shara, 4.20, she want to start the uh, midwife class at about 4.20, okay, cut? Sure. Uh, up, up, upstairs, okay, yeah, straight up there. Go up these stairs over here, all right? But right now, you can go get your refreshments, okay? We can take a break. All praise the Howard Bar Shum, and Mashiach Yahushai. Okay, so it's intermission now, but we do have the classes. Don't forget the classes. Yeah.